Good evening, everybody, and welcome to uh, the Blacksville Millville Regional uh, School District School Committee meeting. If you could please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we'll begin with our introduction of members. Jenna Casluccio, Student Council President. Jane Reggio, Millville. Tammy Lemieux, Blackstone. Tara Larkin, Millville. Erin Bonacco, Millville. Karen Vernon, Millville. Sarah Williams, Blackstone. Danielle Catalano, Student, Con Student Council Vice President. And Jason DeFalco, Superintendent. Um, the first item on our agenda this evening is the election of officers. Uh, so uh, we will uh, open the floor for nominations for the Office of Chairperson of the Blackstone Millville Regional School District School Committee. I'd like to no nominate Jane Reggio. Second. Second. Um, I believe we need to have a uh, voice vote. Let's we'll start. Sarah? Yes. 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 Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Reggio. Thank you very much. <coughs> Move Go back to your seat. <laughs> Come on back over. Yeah. Take your oh, name tag. I'll take my name tag. <laughs> because people don't know who I am. Never know. You make a way better chair than I do. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. At this point, I will entertain a motion, um, not a motion, entertain anyone, uh, motion someone for the vice chair position. I nominate Erin Bonacco. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, are there any other nominations? <laughs> I guess I should no, put no. that out there first. <laughs> All right, hearing none, I'll, in favor of Erin? Yes. 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 Okay. Take your seat. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I will entertain nominations for secretary. I'd like to nominate Tara Lockett. Second. Okay. Are there any other nominations? All right. A motion was made by Aaron and seconded by Tammy to appoint. Tara as our secretary. All those in favor? Oh, we can't do it that way. Yes. 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 Were you going to say no? Were you thinking yeah. about it for a minute? I was just laughing at <laughs> I accept. <laughs> uh, and are we doing the assistant treasurer now? Um, yes, we are. Yep. Okay. So first we'll do. Um, I will entertain nominations for the district treasurer for the 1920 school year. I nominate Karen Vernon. Second. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Are there any other nominations? All right. We'll start on this end this time. Tammy? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, and I will. Hold on. Entertain a motion to appoint Mr. Ronald Pierre Lewis as assistant district treasurer of the Blackstone Millville Regional School District for 2019-20 um, school year. Second. So Aaron, moved by Aaron, seconded by Karen. All those in favor? Tammy, we'll start with you. Aye. Yes. 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 Oh, you don't get to vote. <laughs> well, well, you know, if you'd like. Um, okay, so we've done that. We also have to do, um, I'll entertain a, no, a motion to appoint Monique um, as our assistant secretary, because we had put that into our policies. Right. Aye. Um, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, I hope there are no others. So all those in favor? Yes. Oh, yes, sorry. Yes. 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 Okay. Aren't you lucky over there? 
<laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. And finally, I will entertain a motion to appoint Long and DiPietro as di district councils of the Blackstone Millville Regional School District for the 2019-20 school year. So moved. moved by Aaron. Second. Second. By me. Second. Oh, Sarah. I'm like, I hear it over there. Seconded by Sarah. Uh, all those in favor, we'll start with Sarah. Yes. 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 Okay. Well, that's reorganized. So we're looking forward to a great 1920 school year. And we'll move on to Danielle and Jenna so they can tell us how many days left in the, the year for the seniors. 25. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Danielle. <laughs> Thank you, Danielle. Uh, with the nice weather finally present, the students of BMR have been pushing through for the past couple months and putting in some very hard work. Uh, the sophomores recently ha just had MCAS a couple weeks ago, and that went really well. Um, the kids who are also in AP classes have also been working hard, and over the last couple months, and even tomorrow, they will be taking AP mock exams to get them ready for the real AP test, which will be happening just a few weeks after they return from April break. Uh, third quarter has recently ended, and all students, especially seniors, are working their hardest to push through the final stretch of the school year. Also, a lot of spring sports have recently started. Sports that have started are baseball, softball, tennis, and track and field. Boys baseball recently had their first game, and so did softball. Our tennis team has also been going strong against other schools and have been coming out successful with their wins. Uh, girls softball had their first game and had a very strong win. Um, track and field's first meet was last night against Nipmunk, and also they came out with a victory, too. Um, so the band program has also been working very hard for the past few months. The Winter Guard and Winter Winds just finished off their season on March 30th and April 6th. The Winter Guard got first place in their division at the Nesba Finals Championship. And Winter Winds had their uh, last competition this Saturday, um, and they also got um, Nesba f um, first place at Nesba Finals. The Jazz Band also finished their season with a gold medal at District's competition and a silver, me silver medal at their state's competition. Over this past weekend, the high school and middle school bands went to the annual MICA competition and were very successful with that. The seventh grade concert band won a silver, eighth grade won gold, the high school concert band won bronze, and the high school wind ensemble won a gold medal. Because of their gold medals, the eighth grade will be performing at Mechanics Hall this Sunday, and the wind ensemble will be performing at Symphony Hall on May 4th. We are very proud of their hard work throughout both of the seasons. Um, a really imp something really important that is coming up for the juniors and seniors is prom. It has been a very fun event to get ready for with prom tickets being sold at lunches every day this week and last week. Everyone who is going is extremely excited for this event to be held on April 26th at Crystal Lake in Rhode Island. Um, that is going to be a fun and worthwhile experience for all people going. Mm. Are so you that, going? I am going, yes. Are you going? <laughs> yes, I there am There you going. go. Um, so that's all we have for right now. We hope you all have an amazing spring season. Enjoy the nice weather. And thank you and have a great night. Thank you. Thank Any you. questions for our ladies? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And enjoy the prom. Thank you. <laughs> At this point, I would ask if there is anyone who would like to come speak um, about any issue in public forum. Okay. We have, we have warrants, right? Yes. We have a folder somewhere? Yeah. Jason's hoarding them. It's like the gavel and all the folders. I know, sorry. <laughs> you wanted it all. Yeah. Uh, I will entertain a motion to approve the warrants and minutes of the meeting from March 13th. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved to consent agenda A to approve the warrants and minutes of the meeting from March 13th. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Okay, so approved. Um, the it's two here, right? school choices. Oh, it's down it's down on here. here. <laughs> right. um, item D. This is the uh, early retirement incentive. Yeah, I'm looking for that. Um, so in the in the past, we have offered an early retirement incentive to Unit A members. 
uh, if they retire effective June 30th, 2019. And um, we would like to, if I will entertain a motion if somebody would like to do that again, where we would pay $7,500 to employees who submit their intention to retire by April 30th, 2019. The 7,500 will be taxed and is not pensionable and will be paid by July 31st, 2019. Members would not be eligible for the sick leave incentive and members who declared future retirement are eligible, but anything you've been paid, it's taken off of that. And <coughs> employees must be eligible to retire with the MTRS. So moved. Moved by Aaron. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? It's April 30th. What is today? Is that April 10th. A, is that enough time? 20 days. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Big decision in 20 days. Big decision. Okay. <clears throat> and so this, any if anybody took the, us up on this offer, it would come out of this Fiscal budget year. that's working right now. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? All right. It's been moved and seconded to accept uh, uh, to approve an early retirement incentive to unit a members if they retire effective june 30 2019 as i read previously all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed aye. abstentions okay so we will offer an early retirement incentive to anyone who would be thinking in that direction Uh, and Dr. DeFalco, it's to you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, the first item on our agenda for this evening, we have our two senior class advisors that are going to talk a little bit about our senior class trip, which I think we would probably all love to go on. Um, I'm sure they want to take me on. Tracy and Sue want to come up and talk a little bit to the committee about uh, the trip to Martha's Vineyard. That would be great. Thanks for being here, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a copy of these? We do. Uh, we, I do. Do we all? Do we have yeah, it's nice. Um, so we put, uh, put it to a vote with the class, and Martha's Vineyard did come in the top vote. Um, so uh, Monday, June 3rd, which is the start of our senior week, we will have the trip. Um, trip. Rain or shine? Rain for, <laughs> rain for shine. Um, we're going to use Foxy Travel out of Northbridge for transportation. Um, because of the great fundraising efforts by the class, we're able to fund the entire trip, um, along with giving every... Um, student $25 for lunch or shopping or whatever they want. Dang. Um, so the breakdown is there if the entire class goes, but obviously upon approval we'll send out permission slips and then we'll get an accurate number for that. Um, we're looking at nine chaperones roughly, um, including the assistant principal and the nurse. Um, so that kind of gives you the breakdown on that. The itinerary as far as time goes, we'll probably leave BMR at 7 a.m. right before the buses are coming in. Um, arrive at C Street <coughs> approximately 8.30. Depart on the ferry at 9 um, from New Bedford, arrive at the vineyard around 9.45, and then the students have the entire day to explore the island, uh, rent bus, bikes, hit the beach if it's warm enough, have lunch. Uh, we'll be departing the vineyard at front around 5, back in Bed New Bedford at 5.45, and hoping to be back at BMR around 7. So that's kind of like the overview of the day. Mm -hmm. As far as communication goes, we're going to have a meeting with the students. Um, we'll have them sign on to the Remind app so we can kind of have communication if there's any questions or an emergency. The nurse will be there to dispense medications or attend to any medical issues. Um, and then behavior expectation is going to be based on, you know, school expectations and school um, rules. So that's kind of the plan. I personally have never been, so this is going to be new to me. So. And I personally will tell you that that is my birthday, so I would be glad to go with the senior class. We'll let you I'm know sure, if we don't get enough I'm chaperones. Sure they would love it. And I'm Corey, so we're good. Are the chaperones staff or parents? Yes, yes. staff. Okay. Yeah, I think there'll be a couple of parents, but mostly staff. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Anybody have any questions? So will the students, like, sign? I mean, if they can go anywhere on the aisle, not that it's that big, but will they? I don't know what. Be sign? reminded what time the okay. vote leaves? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think what. we'll have reminders for the communication. Right. Like I said, we're going to have a, an official class meeting with them to go over the do's and don'ts and 
um, the timeline and all that. Um, it's yeah. a they class went, day, so all the rules still apply? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, the, the class of 2013 attended this trip, and they loved they it. And no one got left behind. Everyone was great. <laughs> <laughs> they were really good. Actually, they were at the, um, the ferry stop before it was even time. So. Any other any questions? I will make okay. a motion to approve the senior class trip to Martha's Vineyard on June third. Is there a second? Karen seconded. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Enjoy your trip. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. Thank you so much. And remember. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I want to remember about the trip, but okay. It's one less sub if you go, Jane. Right? Right. Cost saving Good measure. Good point. It's cost <clears throat> saving in the budget. That's right. Um, oh, yeah. If the committee would be okay with this, um, Jane, we, we're still waiting for the architect yeah. to yeah. arrive. Um, so if we could move up the science curriculum update. Sure uh, that would be really great because we have uh, some wonderful staff uh, here to, to give the committee an update on the great work that's been going on within the, uh, the science curriculum uh, uh, revision process. So if our science team, our very small subsection of our science team, <laughs> it's a much larger team, but if you want to come on up and give the committee an update, that'd be great. And thank you so much for being here. Musical chairs. Yeah, I can move the microphone. <laughs> no, I'm good, thanks. Mm -hmm. Come on. I feel like I have enough of a projecting voice. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's your teacher voice, Pam. Yes, my teacher voice. <laughs> so we started um, this process this year. We had asked for um, representatives from elementary school, middle school, and high school. So we have four elementary staff. We have Mrs. Allard, for, who has the reading lens as well. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Cardi, who has the tech lens. Um, we have Mrs. Roussel, who does fifth grade, who mm -hmm. teaches fifth grade, and Mrs. Um, Harpin, Harpin, who teaches second. second grade. We also have three middle school staff, as well as two high school staff. So we have a cross-representation of all of the grades. Um, and staff were asked to join the committee, and this is the crew that joined. Um, so they've been hard at work. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we pretty much started in October. We were meeting with uh, Katie Clark. She's from Teachers 21. And uh, the initial phase of it, we're doing the um, UBD um, sort of format. And what that is is we kind of have stage one, stage two, and stage three. So in the beginning, Katie kind of put us through all the training for that. So we all had a, a common base of knowledge for that. And uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the um, that backwards design process. So basically what it does is, is you begin with the end in mind. We begin with the results. That's our stage one. And then... Uh, Stage two, we get to the evidence, and then stage three, that's where we have, we plan the day-by-day -day lessons. So it's kind of like a backwards design. Um, the way I think of it, it's like if you're going on a car trip, you know where you're going first, and then you design the route. It's not the other way around. You don't just drive and drive and drive, and you end up where you end up. You know where you're going. So that's kind of, you know, backwards design. But in terms of education, it's not always done that way. But this, this is how we're planning it this way. Okay. We start with the standards. And, uh, and the standards, I think, was the big thing is, because next generation standards are fairly new, a um, couple years old, they weren't being um, taught with fidelity in some t classes were taught, some classes weren't. Um, so we looked at all of the standards and the teachers actually decided which ones paired best together and made units out of those. So. Um, right, so there's also some preschool standards that um, we were, <laughs> we were um, <laughs> concerned we wanted to make sure they were addressed so we looked at how those paired up with some of the kindergarten and first grade standards and made sure that our units included those so no matter what or where anybody goes to preschool once they started in BMR they are all those standards will be hit um, we made sure that all of our our goals and our essential questions centered around those um, those standards and that everything kind of ties back to them. When we looked at the assessments, you know, project-based um, and experiments all tied back to which standard is this going to hit, which make, to make sure that everything is still following like that path and those goalposts. And one thing with the next generation science standards 
is that it is much more hands-on than the older science standards, which were much more, this is a plant, this is the cell of a plant. Now it's you're taking the plant apart and finding it yourself. Um, so it's much more hands-on, um, interactive, and um, experimental, and we're trying to integrate as well with the literature and technology piece and STEM piece as well. So, And what we're looking towards is ultimately we're going to be piloting some programs in May. But there's a difference between a program, which is a resource, and the curriculum. So we're writing the curriculum and then finding resources that mirror and back up the curriculum that we've just written. It's not necessarily we're just going to buy a curriculum off the shelf and here it is and hand it to the staff and go. We start with the standards and now we have a very good understanding what the standards are and we're selecting resources to go along with that. A lot of times people use curriculum and resources interchangeably and they're not the same thing. They're very different. Um, you want to talk about how you guys selected the units? Um, the units or the resources? No, the units for instruction that you guys are oh, piloting. Um, so the, we, those of us who are on the, the team um, kind of have an overview now of where everything is going. We reached out to our colleagues who were not on the team and not represented so that when we present to them, you know, here's a unit for you to pilot for us and try it and let us know what you think, it's exactly what they're looking for. We use their feedback to really drive where we're focusing our attentions right now um, so we can get the best feedback possible. So they picked like the, the common um, choice for each grade level and that's the unit they're going to pilot. So they develop, that unit is developed. We have our, another meeting tomorrow with Katie. Katie's coming for just the elementary staff um, because we're going to start, just make sure we have everything in line and ready to go for, um, for May. Our colleagues were also generous enough to make sure they picked the hardest <laughs> unit that they were at least knowledgeable about so that, you know, we know that when all of this goes into it effect, it's, it's all there and um, everybody's comfortable with it. And, and actually I have an idea with that. The, the middle and high schools, they're like, if you're a middle or high school science teacher, you know your curriculum inside and out very, very well. Whereas it's, it's more of an issue with the elementary levels because there is some content knowledge that we have to build with the elementary teachers before they can implement it. So what we're looking at is various resources, and the resources, a lot of them, there are some great ones, mm -hmm. but they also have their strengths. Some are you know, lab-based, some are literature-based, some are both, some have technology connections. We're trying to look at all those and see what's the best fit that's out there, and then we'll ad adopt one of those after the pilot. And then there's still maybe some holes and th things that need to be filled, but now that we know the standards extremely well, because we wrote, we wrote the curriculum mm -hmm. units, mm -hmm. we'll figure out what's the best fit. But middle and high school, it's not as much of a factor because, again, they're fully, if you're a high school science teacher, you know your curriculum extremely well. Mm -hmm. It's more the, the changes have kind of impacted the elementary a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're meeting just with the elementary staff tomorrow. Okay. But. Um, and we may also pick pieces of different programs. So we may, like, we may like the readers in one program and we may like the experiments in another program. So we may take bits and pieces to fit what fits us best, to find what fits us best. And then we'll survey the staff when the pilot is done, as well as maybe some kid input to see what they mm -hmm. think about it and how they, how they like maybe the experiments or the, the readers or whatever, just to kind of hear what everybody has to say. And then we'll make a recommendation based upon that. If I could just add, um, and I know that first and foremost, the science team has been, they really, you, you all have been very hard at work from the fall till now and have made significant progress. So big kudos to all of the members on the, on the curriculum development team. You're also blazing the trail for the rest of us because literacy is up next. And so uh, we were really intentional about how we set this up. So our teachers for science will really help be the trainers for the literacy crew that's going to come up. And I have a sneaking suspicion, Pam, you're going to be on that too. Um, I but. mean, I'd like to throw my name into that hat. I know that I do not have the final say. Reading specialist, But I yes. would love to be a part of that. Hint, hint. And, and, but, and so, you know, creating this process for the first time at this particular level in this particular way is really key uh, because we're going to then kind of strengthen and replicate with English uh, and literacy next year, and then math the uh, following year, and then social studies, and the cycle continues. But I think one of the things I just want to highlight that um, everybody has mentioned uh, um, this evening is, and I think it's, I do think it's unique to how we're doing this. Um, 
you know, I, we have seen a lot of situations where a, a very strong curriculum is written and the units are developed and the units are given to the teachers and then it's up to the teacher to figure out how to implement it. And so teachers will have really great units, but they don't have any resources to go with it. So they then have to find and scrap, you know, and scramble for the resources to implement. Or uh, juxtapose, there's no curriculum written, but we'll, we'll buy a program. And then it's teach the program. Well, programs don't teach, teachers teach. So what we have done is really tried to marry the two, create the process to write the curriculum. So to Mr. Chigali's point, the teachers learn the standards and they really understand the skills and concepts behind that. Um, and then let's kind of tinker around with some different, uh, different sample programs and resources and materials. And to what Christina was saying, well, let's kind of pick and choose and, and you know, pull the best from each part so that we can implement the units the right way. Um, and, I, and I do think that's important to know because that, that, that it shouldn't be different, but it is different in terms well, of how that works. Well, and it's particularly important in science because of that hands-on mm -hmm. piece. Mm -hmm. So we have the resources and tools available to pilot. So like we will we be, have, that's or, part of what we're doing. If we're going to pull apart a plant, we have a plant? Or we will? Yes, we will. That's, that's <laughs> the plan, yes. So um, we have it tomorrow, and we also have April 30th with Katie. So at that point, we're going to get, we're going to build our kits for okay. the teachers for the science so if they need batteries for something we'll make sure we have all that if we need a plant we'll get the yeah. plant um, so we have all those pieces for us to get piloting in May and also so what's been going on like I said we started this in October Christine and I just kind of facilitated but the the real stars are the teachers that are writing the the, the mm -hmm. curriculum Absolutely. so we, we mm -hmm. meet about every month or every six weeks and that's kind of like a check-in they also have time hours in between that they're working outside of those meetings where they're writing and they, they meet with Katie Clark and they kind of go over how the stands are being written. She gives little little hints and kind of steers things a little bit, but they're doing a lot of work outside mm -hmm. as well to write these. So again, I would assume that, you know, ELA next year will be a similar path. Mm -hmm. There'll be t sessions, but also be outside hours as well. Mm -hmm. And um, there'll be s still some more like towards the end of the summer here as, as we're in the mm -hmm. school year, as we get towards summer, there'll be a lot of work to do there too. So they're working outside of those meetings as well. We also have a shared Google Drive, so we have all the templates in. So we have a template that looks like this, and there's, they're all in the Google Drive. So we can see everybody's stuff from all of elementary, middle school, and high school. It's all in one shared, so everybody can see it. Katie can see it, and it's been shared with Jason has it now. Um, so every principal has it, so we really, it's out there. So once we get it all good, good to go, we'll have it out for the staff. It's, um, if I may, it's, it's been really nice too because looking at these standards, um, we know that everything, you know, when you have a kid come to you in third grade, you know that the second grader has learned everything. Um, you don't have to worry about teaching a little extra or, you know, one teacher kind of goes, well, I like, you know, I love teaching this, so I'm going to kind of go real, like with this program and with all the standards being kind of at the forefront. It'll be really nice to know that like, everything has been taught. Um, you have all the knowledge as you progress from one um, grade That's to the next. Mm -hmm. Any, yeah, there. So how will the pilots be structured? Is there going to be one in every building? Or how, our, how will the grade levels work? For our goal is two per grade. So two we'll have. per grade, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so 3K to. Not K, 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 K through five. five. Well, K, K through five, at least in the elementary level, mm -hmm. and then middle school and high school will be structured just a tad different. But um, because there's only one or two of them at each <laughs> grade level, so they'll have they'll teach that. Um, and then we are going to look at a few different programs. We have three that we're eyeing right now, and we'll use have like say Mrs. Alwater's teaching. She'll teach just one program. Use teach that unit using one program, and then you know Mr. Tringales he'll teach that using the same grade with another program and we'll see what pieces we like best and not. So May is your start. Is it the full month of May or when is the coming back together and like So we have survey. training tomorrow and then we're just going to kind of fine tune things and April 30th that's where we're going to pull, literally mm -hmm. pull all our materials together and that's when we're going to give it to the teachers. So they can do it the whole month of May and at the end we'll have a survey like we said of the, of the mm -hmm. staff of the kids. And then we'll bring that together. And it may be this this program is really strong in second grade, but in third grade, this program is. Mm -hmm. But it can't be hopscotch like that. It's, it's all going to be somewhat aligned vertically. So I think if we have different 
resources of different grades, that would be the same thing we have now. Mm -hmm. We don't want to do that. We want to have it all cohesive. So is there a plan to work through the summer if, if to have it on board for September? Is that our There plan? is. So okay. there's two phases uh, we're looking at of staff development. We're actually um, part of the Blackstone Valley curriculum group. So we're running actually a science PD for our uh, teachers uh, pre-K to five and for other pre-K to five teachers in the valley. Uh, we're actually going to hold it here at the um, middle school. Um, and it's a three-day training that will cover each strand. So it will really teach the content. However, we are looking at bringing that uh, training specifically to all of our elementary teachers. So we're kind of looking at those that are really um, kind of excited about it and want to get an early jump can take uh, the training in June. And um, those that want to spend the summer kind of, you know, looking at the units and looking at the resources as they start to come in, we'll have the training on the um, back end of summer for everybody. So, yeah. Um, and, and what I also want to mention just to the committee is that uh, our team will be returning, I'm sure, in June to present to the committee what the needs will be for the actual materials and kits and readers and all the resources to go along with it. So when when we're going to pilot this in May though that will require some sort of hands-on to Jane's mm -hmm. so when will that ordering be done if they're only finishing April 31st or whenever that meeting is what what's the I mean are we running yeah. to the science store or what are we doing <laughs> most of the experiments I, I can speak to the elementary level because I obviously have taught the elementary level but most of them are things you can buy at the dollar store okay. or at, mm -hmm. so like it may be plastic cups and string. Sure. And so it may be something you can buy at the dollar store. Um, we're not expecting, the units that were picked, we're not expecting anything above and beyond Amazon. No oscilloscope. Amazon, <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. No, no, <laughs> we also do have, um, I know in Millville, we have a whole bunch of science stuff that we've had. So we're actually going to go through that first mm. from when we had used to have science as a special. And we're going to pull through that first, take out what we can get out of there, and then we'll build um, the kids off of that as it's well. It's funny you said that. That yes. I mentioned that when I met with Jason this week. I said, have we gone through all of the storage closets in mm -hmm. every building mm -hmm. to find all of the rulers, Bunsen burners, <laughs> beakers? Because I know when I was doing PT, PTO, BIPO, mm -hmm. whatever you call it, every time we got our stuff got moved, it went to another closet that had investigations, blocks, and all these things. So I know they exist in every building. And we have like a lot of microscopes in Millville, so we, you know, so that's kind of like where my thought is, is that we start there, yep. and then, and some of those resources, obviously, you have, like, if you need a plant, you can't keep that out of storage. Right. So, um, but, you know, there's going to be some things we need to purchase. Sure. Um, and we do, we did actually ask the companies to send pi um, samples to us as well, so we have, we will have enough samples um, to pilot. Okay. And it, it would be very easy to buy everything from these companies. They're gladly to do that for mm -hmm. you. Like, right. like one of them I think I saw was something about weather or water collection, and they put a beautiful Ziploc baggie labeled, it had a cup <laughs> and a Sharpie in it, and I think that was like $6. Right. <laughs> they would gladly sell that to you. Absolutely. But we're not going to go that way. You can buy a pack of cups for a dollar. There, there may be some things we buy from them, but I think we sure. can supply our own cups and Sharpies yeah. for less than yeah. $6. So. Starting with what we have. Mm -hmm. Exciting stuff. Yeah, very exciting. I and I appreciate I know we all do the effort that people put in to, to develop this. It's clearly long overdue in our And hopefully district, that so. with more hands on the kids will get it right. and grasp it more. Right. You know, instead of sitting there and being talked to. So And it's the and you know, for the first time through the process, it's hard. You know, mm -hmm. it's something which we haven't done before. And it, as Steve mentioned, the understanding by design, that backwards design concept. Um, a lot of folks know it, but when you kind of get into it and you start wrestling with it and writing out the units, it's you're kind of mucking around with it. It's really, mm -hmm. it takes a few go rounds. So the science crew, what truly a trailblazer, is setting this all up for the rest of us. So it was definitely very difficult seeing the standards and knowing I know what I can do for that, and you have to like put that on hold and make sure that you know you do the assessment first, and you know where you're going. Yeah. Sure. Anyone else? Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Thank you. and good luck. Thanks. 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 Thank you. I believe as we uh, were listening to our science team, our architect came in. Mm -hmm. So if you want to come on up and join us, and uh, the PowerPoint's all queued up. I see that. Thank you very uh, much. Sure. And I, if you toggle the, I think it's the little arrow key. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, here shot. comes your helper. Helper. Our <laughs> Superman here can show us. There you go. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, I do have copies with me. Um, oh, I'll hand those you out. Need them. Uh, so I'm Brian LaRoche. I'm from PCA 360. We're the owner's project manager uh, that is signed by uh, the state for the project. NV5 is the designer. They're the design engineers. Unfortunately, uh, he was a little bit later than I uh, on our way down, and we incorrectly had uh, the meeting listed as seven tonight, oh. not six. So apologize for that. It's okay. Um, but I, it's, uh, I'm happy to be here uh, before you to present the project. Uh, pretty straightforward. It's um, at the uh, Millville Elementary School. We have two original boilers that are identified to be replaced, uh, and an SOI was submitted to the MSBA for uh, participation in their accelerated repair project and, uh, and accepted. So this is the first uh, step of the process in that uh, going after that grant uh, with the state is uh, you got to go through a feasibility schematic design phase. And so that's where we're at right now. Uh, we've uh, prepared uh, with the help of uh, NV5. We have this uh, book is the full engineering study. Uh, we've sifted it down to the basic information for presentation tonight. But if anybody's interested in all the background that goes to what we're going to show you tonight, it's here in the book. There's that, drawings and, and so forth. That I was can, a PowerPoint, and we said no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have five we, slides. Uh, we <laughs> we're all night if, uh, if we went through all the detail, but uh, certainly a lot of information. And uh, uh, so, anyhow, so I'll present uh, for you tonight, uh, you know, a little bit about the project, just to bring you up to speed. So the, uh, as I was saying, you know, we're, this is where we are in the timeline for the project. Uh, you know, we've, we we formed the team, you know, the OPM and the uh, the engineers on. On, under contract, we've been under contract since the end of January, and in that time, we've gone through and we've uh, done the, the assessment of the, the building and the equipment that's there. The engineers have gone and looked at many different options, uh, and we've put it together in this uh, schematic design package. Uh, we've put together a uh, project schedule, sort of looking over the durations. Uh, we have to present this project uh, to the state as well. They're a partner in this. And um, so we're showing you tonight, and then the next step will be they get a look at it, and then they also get to say whether they agree as well. Uh, so there's a, quite an extensive approvals process that's about to begin. And then after that, um, when both the state and, and uh, the town and the, the uh, school committee have agreed, uh, then we go through a process of going after the funds uh, and requesting of the town the appropriation. Uh, this is Greg Walsh uh, from Hi. my office. Uh, it took me a little longer to get here than it did, Brian. I'm not sure how you. Yeah, I have a better GPS, I think. <laughs> uh, so we're, um, and then after we get through the uh, the, the the approvals for the appropriation, uh, the project we move into the uh, the bid procurement, where we go out and publicly bid the project, uh, and then once we make the contract award, we would move on. So uh, we're, we're a ways away uh, for, from that. Um, but for tonight, uh, like I said, we're here for the feasibility schematic design um, sort of approval. But what we're doing is we're, uh, if we go to the, the next slide here, um, we have a couple of options uh, that we are here to talk to you about. Uh, so we asked the engineers to look at um, a one-for-one -one replacement. Uh, you have uh, oil-fired boilers at the school. And we, there's an underground storage tank that's 10,000 gallons that's there. Um, and the tank that exists is at its uh, end of its useful life. It really needs to be replaced at this point. Uh, any further use runs the risk of uh, some issues, and uh, so it, it really has to be done. So um, that was looked at uh, with this option O that we have here, the oil-fired boilers. And uh, they've prepared a cost for that. And it's at uh, 1.3 million for the, the construction of it. And um, while oil boilers have a lower first cost, when you look at the cost to run a boiler plant that is oil based over a longer period of time, it requires more maintenance and the fuel costs are actually higher. So over a long period of time, you say, you know, how long will this equipment serve the school? You say about 25 to 30 years. And in that time frame, uh, you're going to spend more money to operate it. So that would be a, um, a drawback to that option. Um, and then if you look at the middle option, we have uh, propane. Uh, we actually have two options for you to consider tonight for that. Um, 
it has to do with where the tanks would be located. But the boiler plant itself would be um, a little cheaper for the first cost to, uh, to install. Um, actually, <laughs> I see there's two. I, there's a little asterisk. The reason I say it's actually it is less because there's two options. The one option that we're going to recommend tonight actually is the lower cost, and, uh, and we'll get into that in just a minute. Um, so there is um, a benefit that it, it does have a lower first cost um, and a lower fuel uh, maintenance cost, uh, which you'll see in a moment. Uh, but if we were to choose this other option that we had uh, for the tank placement, which I'll tell you in a moment why that's not an option anymore, um, it would have been a little bit more. Uh, and then the other one uh, that we were asked to look into is a wood pellet uh, boiler option. And uh, while that is actually a pretty good option from an environmental standpoint, um, the challenge with a uh, pellet boiler is that the boilers don't have the ability to modulate much. So they basically run at one, one rate and that's it. And the school's demands uh, fluctuate during the day and, and at different periods of time. So you have to install a second set of boilers that are either propane or oil to run alongside them <laughs> to deal with uh, sort of the, the pluses and minuses. And then when you get into uh, the spring and the fall when it's not always cold, the pellet boiler is hard to sort of start and stop, so then you end up using the other boilers more often. So what ends up happening is you spend quite a bit of money to put in two boiler plants because of some of the challenges they present. So it ends up being a very high first cost, almost uh, two million dollars uh, to do that. Um, and it does have more maintenance. You have to continually empty out the ash from the boiler. You got to replenish the uh, pellets. And the school would require a silo on the outside to house the amount of pellets you would need. Otherwise, you'd be getting deliveries on almost a weekly basis. So, Brady would love that. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think we safely uh, kind of felt yeah. that was not a viable option. Uh, but we wanted to let you know that we did consider it. Um, so then if we go to the next slide, uh, these are the propane, uh, which seems to be uh, the preferred <laughs> option based on our, our interactions with uh, the assistant superintendent. Um, and so we looked at a, at a couple different options, and the two that seemed to be the best were the ones that got us outside of the wetland uh, protection area. There's a 100-foot uh, buffer zone. In, there's an area in the trees sort of below the school by the field that is wetlands. And so if we put any of the tank locations in there, then we'd be in the, dis the uh, jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. And, it's just another public uh, approval that we would have to go through, and then there's more uh, costs associated with doing that work because you have to follow order conditions. So we felt that it w the two options that we have before you were the preferred options. Um, and so option 1P1, we're calling it, that we have six 1,000-gallon propane tanks that would give the school at the coldest design week, uh, give you 10 days uh, of operation. Uh, and uh, the other option, we have the same six tanks, but located sort of to the back and rear of the school. Um, there's a water tower in the back there, and we were looking at that as a possibility. Um, I heard from the chief, uh, the fire chief, Chief Landry, today, um, and we were thinking that he would be concerned about uh, propane tanks near the building at the front. And it's funny, it was the opposite condition. He actually, uh, when he saw the, the plans, he said, I, I actually have a, uh, a radio tower plan for the rear location, and he would prefer the, lo the tanks to be to the front. We're going to have to have, a, we'll have a conversation with the chief. Sure. Yeah, because yeah. yep. we don't want the propane tanks near you don't. by the school. Okay. No. Yeah, oh. no. So the, uh, the tanks will be refilled um, in, you know, every 10 days, so the, uh, there will need to be snow clearing and, an, and a clear path to them, you know, maintained. Uh, so that was one consideration that the team thought the front location would make sense. And then from a safety standpoint, um, you know, there was protections put around the tank of bollards and so forth. Um, and it does meet all the, the state and uh, NFPA design guidelines for clearances away from structures too. So, that, so anyhow, I just want to let you know that. Uh, so those are really the two options for propane. So it's the question is, uh, you know, so, what would you prefer? Uh, so P1. Mm -hmm. That's the front of the school? That's where? It's, um, if, uh, yeah, I, 
Right. So if you're the, okay. as you go back around on the side. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Okay. As you start, All right. Right. you're going to see yeah. it. Yeah. The front door to the school. Yeah, it's yeah. right hand yeah. side and as the road to, goes. Yeah. There's a service road that goes and around. And that's the where all the parents mm -hmm. line up who that's drop where off. Where the preschool now, right? kids run and play all the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a large water tank to the side of the auditorium. It's the it's the stage area of the auditorium. It's yep. on the back side yep. of the the, okay. uh, the stage. Yep. And just one clarifying question on this. So option uh, P two, mm -hmm. that that's the safest option in terms of having the tanks the furthest away from the actual school structure itself. That's that's correct. Yes. Okay. We yep. we studied. I think we studied six alternatives on the site yep. uh, in total. Um, and for a variety of reasons, as Brian was saying, uh, between wetlands and outcroppings of ledge, um, so the difficulty of trenching and getting a propane line from the tanks to the school building, um, we eliminated four, and these two uh, were the top the choices. So uh, as Brian said, the, the P1 is up close to the school, and then P2 is out back, sort of in the very back right-hand corner of the site. So does, does P2 include clearing that because you can't take any part of the road because the trucks have to get down there so does that's that correct include mm -hmm. clearing the trees yep yep yeah there's a little bit so of work is that there. why the it's 1569 on that page I'm, and i apologize we we actually got updated estimates okay. last night ah, <laughs> it's okay. seven o'clock last night and in okay. the rush i updated the figures and i didn't realize i had also put them on on the options plan okay so the figure that you see on p1 on on the uh, the three options there it's actually it's gone down okay. uh, which is good so What's we the uh, so the number for the area in the back is uh, uh, three three uh, one point uh, three million uh, almost four four million um, so yeah uh, we had two estimates that were done one by the the architect or engineer uh, we also had a uh, they hired a, uh, a cost estimator too so we got those uh, the cost estimators estimate it had gone down and we were able to take some cost out of the engineers estimate and to get them down and the two numbers came pretty close to each other so we feel pretty confident that uh, this estimate is is a good one that uh, the 1.3 uh, 98, 98 for that option so the number on the replacement options to consider on s on slide f on slide three that's actually the cost it's not the 1569 Right. That's correct. Okay. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Right. So it happens when you do things too quick. <laughs> yeah, these are above ground, right? Yes, they're all no. above ground. That's right. That's yep. Correct. Yep. And and so then what is on this page has only one of those little Yeah, silver that's things? just a, that's a picture of what they'll be. It's the, they're uh, they're going to be that size. Um, and that's the actual model that the uh, the, pl uh, the the plumbing engineer was recommending for the uh, for the school. But there'll be how many of those? There will be actually three. Oh, three. The reason three is right now you have uh, two boilers, and so one boiler would do uh, would run the school at its uh, peak. Um, so now you have a second one that's really standby. Um, the engineer uh, is, has designed it. Uh, so when you do propane, it's a high efficiency system. It's condensing. And so the boilers operate at their maximum efficiency when they're in the 50% range. So the boilers aren't at their peak uh, capacity. That's when you get the best efficiency from them. And so um, they've planned for three smaller boilers. So really, two of them do your load. And the, the third one is a standby, which is, is good practice. That way, if you lose one at some point, you, you're not uh, ever at risk with the school. You'll be able to, to, to uh, do the full coverage. And, and, did, and did you or did the study find that clearly we need to replace what we have? Uh, the boilers that you have are at their, uh, the end of the, what the engineers call their expected useful life. So they are definitely getting to that point. Um, are they functioning now uh, without an issue? They are. Uh, but that's not to say that um, that will continue. Um, and the maintenance costs, I think what you'll hear from the school are, are climbing. They're, they're needing to service them more and more. Yeah. So they, they are working. <laughs> Yes. And then there also is the issue of the ta the oil tank, which they've right. started to, to have some maintenance yeah, issues with. Yeah. yeah. So that's not included so in the right? So my question about the oil tank is, 
it, it seems that you're definitely pro propane, propane. <laughs> but was it that you need to replace that 10,000 gallon tank oil tank? Yes. So as part you install yep. the oil. Yep. So as as part of option O uh, for the boilers, yes, that it was a, a new tank for the That's oil storage mm -hmm. and two new uh, oil fired boilers three so, I'm sorry three new oil fired boilers. so you gave us the call the mm -hmm. you said um, but every 10 days we would get a fill up of propane right that is correct do we know currently how often we have to fill our 10,000 gallons 30 oil? days so 30, 30 days. days correct mm -hmm. yep. but let so me add 10,000 gallons of oil mm -hmm. 10 days for 6,000 gallons of yes. propane. Correct. That's correct. They will now. At the worst, uh, that's the peak, mm. coldest period of time. When you you're know, burning the most fuel. Probably, I think they said it was the month of January is when would be the peak, sort of late January. So the cost we're looking at on option O <coughs> mm -hmm. includes how many boilers? Two. Two. So there are, uh, the, the design right now is for three boilers, okay. all similar oil size. Or yep. oil, oil or propane. Okay. That's right. So yep. option O is, is three oil-fired boilers, a new 10,000-gallon tank where it currently stands. Correct. Meeting current codes. Underground, yep. brand yep. new. It would yep. meet all the current codes. That's, That's correct. correct. No need for explosive tanks in school. And <laughs> I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And so you said propane is just more cost efficient? Uh, when you look at from the fuel today, and it's hard for us to know what the future right, will be for it, fuel costs, but in today's exactly. dollars, uh, yeah, there's an, a, a calculation that they have in there. It has to do with the, the amount of BTUs you get per, per unit of, of uh, the fuel. You actually, uh, the cost of oil ends up being higher even though the, oftentimes what you hear is the, you know, the amount of BTUs you get per gallon of oil versus a gallon of propane are different, but the, the fuel costs are different. So when you, when you balance them out for how you get your fuel and the fuel's pri uh, propane's priced, it does work out that oil is more expensive. So you will pay higher fuel cost and you're gonna pay higher uh, maintenance costs on oil um, than you would if it were propane. Is there any part of this that includes removing the oil tank if we're not going to use it in the future? Uh, so if we were to go with a propane option, the tank would be removed. Yes. yes. As so part of option. Yeah, as, as part of all three options of all the, the, tank all the options we studied, the tank, the underground oh, tank good. would be removed. Included in this quote. Yes, that's it is. correct. Yep. Yep. And I, I just asked a question, but I'll, I'll ask it again for public. You learned from MSBA that they will approve an oil project because in the past they wouldn't yes. do those. Okay. I called and spoke to um, our project manager who also called uh, her boss and got confirmation that they would. Okay. Yes. Approval of oil or propane? Oil. Oil. Okay. So they don't like to, they had had a, in their grant application that they wouldn't remove old oil tanks and they wouldn't propose oil. Oh, well, see that removal, we we'll see, okay, so the, that's it. So now I heard a little bit more. So okay. <laughs> oil boilers, they will participate in. Okay. Now the grant only is limited to the work that's contained within the room itself. The MSBA doesn't participate in any, uh, they have exceptions to what they'll do. So they give you your reimbursement rate, but then there's all these qualifiers of what they won't pay for. They won't pay for anything outside of the room. So for if it's fuels? including fuel, yeah. For any for oil or Light work, or anything like that. Can I, can I just so these this? Yeah. six tanks that are going to be outside, they won't pay for? No. They, uh, no. The, the site work, so it, it, there's a little bit of, uh, it, it's a little bit of a process. Some of the direct related equipment they will, but some of the site work they will not. Uh, we have to go through a review process with them. Uh, in order to, for them to review it, and they'll tell us right. uh, it, that's coming up after uh, the town vote. Then they'll go through and tell us what they will and will not. Okay, Just let me ask a couple of clarifying questions, if I if I may. Um, so the the first one is around the oil tank, sure, which is underground, which is not in the room where the boilers are. Right. Mm -hmm. Will there be a reimbursement, as far as you know, for, at this stage in the work for? for you all to remove that underground oil tank 
if we shift to propane? No. No. Okay. Irregardless of whether it's oil for oil or not, propane not oil, does, they don't. Yeah. They don't uh, environmental and you know exactly. outs, work outside the room. They don't participate. Right. In. Okay. Yeah. So, so when so when when the committee approves their or recommends their preference, mm -hmm. and it goes forward to the town, this one million eight hundred seventy-three thousand eight hundred eighteen total projection, not all of that. Maybe is is eligible for the reimbursement. That's, that's so would the ta so when we present to the town, would we have an idea of what percentage is reimbursable and what percentage what percentage of that is not? We will have been through a review with the MSBA, so we'll have a very good idea. Yes. So Fire this time. so the second question is around the the site work. So the site work is included. In this one million three hundred ninety-eight dollars one hundred seven. Yes. But again, we don't know, or, or do we know that the MSBA will not reimburse for any of that site work? Uh, yeah, it, some of it they may. It's it, it's the language that they do. It's di work or directly related to the boiler work. But generally, their rule is if it's outside of the walls of the boiler room, they don't participate. Right. And that usually means site work. So they may say, we'll reimburse you for the pipe in the ground, but we won't reimburse you for the excavation for that pipe. You know, they, they may, it, they, they often will sort of say, well, the, the piping is in the plumber's scope, so that, that counts, but the excavation works in the site cost, so we won't. Hmm. Right. So you will need as much clarity as possible mm -hmm. before you go before the yeah, town of Melville. Town, you, you cannot bring, and I say this very respectfully, both of you, but yep. you cannot bring to them what you're bringing here. Yep. Okay. We have got to have the clarity around what's, what is going to be reimbursed and what's not. Yep. That number really matters. Right. And I agree. until we go through this process, until we submit this to the MSBA and go through the process and see what they'll reimburse and what they won't, and we can give you our opinion. Of yeah, what sure, do, sure, but, sure. I understand but, that. But again, that's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process where you know, if you can create a case and an argument as to why costs should be part of the mm -hmm. boiler room project, even though it's outside the boiler room process, project uh, space, the MSBA will listen. They may not yeah. agree, yeah. but they will listen, and sometimes they agree and sometimes yeah. they don't. So until we have that review process, but by the time we come back to, the, to talk to the selectmen, we will have had that review process. So we will have solidified. Mm -hmm. what's eligible and what's ineligible and then we can tell you what how that impacts your ultimate what the cost because line. as Brian said you have a you have a reimbursement rate but that's only on the eligible expense. On the eligible right. Right. so mm -hmm. yeah. we'll, once we calculate once we find out what's ineligible we can tell you what your actual reimbursement right, rate will, will be, be. Right. So, so the town there is a scheduled annual town meeting May 13th 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 that 13th. sounds right yep Will we be, we have a, a warrant item on hold for that. Yep. Will we have had that review by then, depending on, of yeah, course, uh, what we say The MSB board tonight? meeting is in June. Oh. Uh, so we will not uh, make that date. Okay. And so we are not able to, to go to town meeting until after the MSBA board has met and voted yep. on the project. Okay. So we, so we can. So what will happen is when this gets submitted, uh, we will work with our uh, team at the MSBA. Uh, this is an example of their detailed 3011 yep. budget. Yep. And we go through a process of reviewing the documents, reviewing the scope, and breaking down the cost into the little parts and pieces. And that's at the time when they'll tell us what's in, what's out. And at the end of that, they will give us a budget that we will then be able to take to the town. So that okay. we will have, uh, <laughs> there's only one thing that is uncertain, and that's contingencies. Mm -hmm. So there's soft costs and hard cost contingencies. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that the MSBA reserves their right to tell you whether they'll participate in any of those until the end. Yeah. So there is a little margin of uncertainty that we won't know. Um, right. And you know, that those monies will be included in the project at, at that time. So we'll know the rate and the eligibility mm -hmm. for the right. different items by af after your meeting with the MSBA. Yep. And just another clarifying question, if, if I may. <clears throat> when I look at the um, budget, uh, 
so the one million three hundred ninety eight thousand one hundred seven dollars that's for the site work that's for the boilers that's for all the piping that's the, the so tanks. The, that's the actual work work yep. and the rest of these are other expenses that is that, correct that's what we would call soft costs mm -hmm. design and mm -hmm. okay seems silly they pay for the boiler in a room but not the tanks that run it outside <laughs> the room but i'm just saying that's just me because uh, yeah i hear you um, yeah mm -hmm. I can ex actually understand their logic of why. Some towns have uh, natural gas piped into the building and there's no cost oh. to the school for that. So okay. they try and be even and fair with everybody and so they say, well, why should we in some cases pay more to one town and not another? They try very hard at being sort of even to be able to be fair to every uh, town and city gets the exact same treatment. Right. And that's, again, that's part of that review process and that discussion. Sure, you sure, sure. You know, talking about the equity of if you have natural gas in your building, you, you know, you're not looking for reimbursement for anything outside the boiler room. But when you don't have natural gas in your building, you're hoping that they'll consider reimbursing right. you for the fact that you need to put propane outside your your building. Otherwise, you don't, your gas fire boilers don't run. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here. So, with all of that being said, I'm not trying to throw a. a monkey wrench at you but with what you're telling me that working inside the building is higher is a higher chance of being reimbursed than outside and we're looking at most cost effective were high high efficient wall units considered that would supply heating and air conditioning high efficient I'm sorry like a mini split the, uh, the like a VRF or something like that you mean uh, like a uh, a variable refrigerant uh, yeah. volume, volume system that, that that does both heating and cooling so the grant program is only for uh, for, for oh, boiler yeah. central yeah. plant they wouldn't if it's walled units they it would not count they don't cover them yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's why it wasn't even considered yeah yeah I have a question on option p2 I know we had looked at a playground in the background and yes, we were we told did. no. So is that land, is that space even, I don't remember why it was. No, we weren't told no. I thought it was No, denied. we weren't told no. Okay. The concept of the playground was told no, the playground not the itself. space. Okay. I thought, it, I wasn't sure if it was a space. I just wanted to make sure that yeah. that wasn't going to no. be an issue if we. No. 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 And in the woods wasn't the issue. It was when we were talking about using the blacktop yeah. was where we had the issue because then the fire truck can't Couldn't make, turn take around. the space. Okay. Can't so make its way around. Which is why I know you can't go at any part of the road. Right. That makes sense. The road or the it parking lot. It has to be able to be so many feet from the building with its mm -hmm. ladder. Okay. No, actually, that was the flattest piece for right <clears throat> for everybody. Um, does anyone have a, a sense, a feeling, a um, so you are looking for us to make a decision on P one, P two oil? Uh, so at, the, at this point, uh, or, oh. we need your uh, to know what your preferred option is, okay. so that we can let the MSBA board know what your preferred option is, and then they'll look and consider everything, and then also decide whether they agree um, because they like I said they're their partner in this they're paying for a good share of it as well mm -hmm. so um, oftentimes though they'll they'll go with whatever the recommendation of the local municipality is so we're just that's all we're asking tonight is just uh, what is your preference uh, for the options so we can let them know so let me ask the committee Hi. this is it is it I don't know how to, s to word this is it worth taking this kind of information to the town and seeing their options or is it or their preferences or is it our preference I think the typical process or the usual process, process is the committee yeah. makes the call the decision goes back to MSBA and then it the goes OPM to the comes out to the towns for town meeting yeah. right. and then they go back to the board meeting in June for final kind of cut if you will or mm -hmm. kind of next steps yeah. Yeah. Well, I, think that's a I, I can only speak for myself, but I'm not, I, I am very leery of a propane tank that's as close to the building as I'm just P1 is. Propane in general, so. Oh. Am I, am I P1, Jane, you're, say, you're saying P1. I'd like to take P1 out as an option. Yes. You're saying placement. Yes. I, I, 
was just going to say that propane itself, if we're able to remove that oil tank and replace it and get another 20 to 25 years from it, then just, you said, does anyone have a sense or if that my first initial feelings are why would we go away from oil? I wish we I had like the cost savings in front of us. Yeah. I don't know if someone would tell me that it's hundreds of thousands of dollars a year off of our budget to go from and and I I'm kind of curious how Milva will feel about 6,000 gallons of propane tanks being installed. Well, I I yeah. And what if we went through all this you had the approvals the and and then our town declined it because of the tanks or because of and they preferred oil. In, in the end, not the, I mean, we're not designing anymore until the t the right. the town votes. So if at that meeting they said uh, the vote, uh, I mean, uh, I could see that you could always say either or. Mm -hmm. The MSBA may say, well, if that if you're going to give the town the option of either or, then you may have to go just. They have very specific vote language. Mm -hmm. You probably have to use the higher cost vote language. And if for some reason, you know, the desire was, you had, well, I don't, I've never seen it done before, but I'm just saying maybe there's two questions. One, that's the money, and then the option. Mm -hmm. And if the option is the less one, that's fine. Uh, as, long as, as long as the, the appropriation and the vote language follows the MSBA rules and the dollar amount covers any of the two, I don't see why not. Do you? I mean, I've not seen it done, but. Yeah. I, uh, my uh, I mean, yeah. we had, I mean, typically you have one. One, one yeah. You go with one project yeah. that's yeah. been approved by the MSBA and has and has been approved by the town, and then you vote an appropriation to pay for that project. Um, and if you did it that way, and people didn't like the proposed solution, they wanted your proposed oil, and they wanted to do uh, propane, and the vote failed then you'd have to start that process over again with the MSBA. Um, and whether you can have two separate votes for two different projects, I, I've not seen that, so I'd have to, I, I'd want to make sure the MSBA was okay. Yeah, we, we definitely would have to include them. I, I'm just going to talk sort of a little openly for the moment, but like, for example, we've had roof projects where we've said PVC roof or EPDM, and as long as we let the MSBA know that we're considering two options, but we want to decide once the pricing comes in. It's called an add alternate or a deduct alternate. So there is somewhat of a there's precedent, but it, this is a little little bit more. Well, yeah, because <laughs> I, I would think this has more. Two, two it, it, it's not, yeah, it's not putting a rubber roof on right. per, versus putting right. a PVC roof on. You're doing in that case, the MSBA is approving a, a, a roof project, and, a, and they don't care what. Well, the, and, the and my is. my sense yeah. is oil likely has more that's not reimbursed because the propane is removing a tank the oil is removing a tank and putting a new tank but it's also well, taking down all these trees down. and putting all mm -hmm. this other yeah. stuff and outside so that's purchasing is there an option to have the tanks in the ground to uh to propane? No, put the propane in the ground there is an option uh, we don't we didn't present it to you uh, but it is you can put propane underground whoa mm -hmm. Anyway. And that ten thousand oh. gallon <laughs> space. Oh. Nice. I don't. I, I think it's all ledge. I don't know if you no, get I'm in saying, the ground. Well, I'm saying if we use the current yeah. hole, <laughs> we take. <laughs> <laughs> we just recently built a yeah. program. Uh, the, yeah. the, when we did that playground, that that's all. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awful. <laughs> it's all rock. An awful lot of ledge. It's all rock. We didn't even yeah. think that was a, a possibility, but I yeah. think you're right. The, uh, the the oil tank location. It'd have to be the I same. I just don't know that that footprint <laughs> is actually enough. I don't think it is. No. Yeah. And who knows how much ledge they removed to put the tank. So, on. are <laughs> there, in, in your knowledge, are there a lot of school districts that operate propane systems? From my experience, the trend is to go towards propane. Mm. For the districts that we've worked for, the environmental concern of oil has been their concern. Mm -hmm. There were some uh, news articles in the last you know, five years where there have been spills. Right. Um, in, at the time uh, we were working on one of them, that became like the, the whole point of the conversation is we didn't even want to entertain oil because of the possibility of an environmental disaster. 
Um, I mean, you've had this tank in that location for 20 years without an issue. Um, but, you know, there is wetlands But then just we've had a lot on. of maintenance. I mean, we have annual maintenance on yeah, a tremendous are, amount of maintenance on it. They are having some issues with the yeah, tank. Yeah, they are. Some mm -hmm. concerns about yeah. uh, so the air and the filling of the tanks. I think, right. Uh, so but the one thing I would, age. if I could say, the, te the oil, the technology we have now, there are a couple things that are safeguards to protect you from issues. They have tank monitoring systems to measure the level, so your consumption versus how much is in the tank. It's always checking to make sure there's no imbalance. Right now, the custodian for the school is doing that manually. You know, right. he's measuring it on a regular right. interval. <laughs> he's sort of trending it himself uh, with the weather and how much it's using. So he's doing a really good job of, of protecting the school's risk uh, by doing that because if there's anything that is out of whack, then it would tell him that there's a problem. Mm -hmm. There's equipment now that does that automatically. <laughs> it's probably better, though. <laughs> <laughs> Intuition is sometimes hard to read, but um, then it's also everything's double-lined. So the tank, we don't know whether the tank now is double-lined or not. Right. It should have been at the time it was put in, but we can't locate anything that tells us for sure it was. But whatever goes in new would be double-lined. The piping from the tank to the room is buried. It's not double-lined. It would be in a new con condition. So everything would be designed to drain back into the tank. It would be all dub you know, double line pr monitored. So there are a lot of protections that would be put in place for oil uh, that right. would mitigate those concerns. So you just said that you feel the majority go with propane for, but would it be fair to say that those towns or cities have town or city gas no, and not storage yeah. tanks no they're that, that those, those were propane projects as opposed to natural gas projects mm -hmm. yeah. but, um so the, propane. the the town that i'm thinking of and it, it was more of an emotional decision of mm -hmm. envi uh, the environmental concerns mm -hmm. at the particular time there was a school near them that they overfilled the tank the water got into a storm drain and polluted a local brook mm -hmm. and it became a big issue in the area uh, i forget the name of the town uh, it was out by like Templeton, Phillipston area off of Route 2. I mean, clearly, towns that have natural gas would go in that direction. Right. But that's it's not it's an if option. we were talking about a school in Blackstone, they just put, they just expanded their most of their gas lines. So hmm. I think it would be a, yeah. we wouldn't even be having this discussion. Agreed. Whereas nowhere in Millville has that kind of access. Who delivers propane? I'm not sure. Not the do we have it? Do we have any other building that gets propane right now? Not to my knowledge, no. Mm -mm. So we did talk to a local supplier. Oh, you yeah, did? Okay. Just, yeah, that's what we just were asking. Yeah, the uh, local supplier, that's a, another reason why they, the 10 day cycle seemed right. They, the local supplier felt that that was more than reasonable. Um, they also, uh, there's two options you could own the tanks or you could rent the tanks, and they just put the cost they prorated into the, the value of your delivery, you know, the fuel cost. So right. it's, you know, so that those are, those are two options that we could get to if, when and if we get to that point. So early, earlier you had asked if you sort of knew what the, the differences were over, it's what they call a li the life cycle uh, cost analysis, right? right? So what they, what, what they do in a life cycle cost analysis is they take your, your first cost, the million three or whatever the number is to build it originally, and then they take into consideration your fuel cost over that period of time, your maintenance cost over that period of time. And just to give you a sense, and in the, in the book that we'll leave here with you, the analysis is here for you. Um, if you had uh, your, either of your propane uh, options, the, the, the propane at the school, front of the school or the back of the school, the life cycle cost is roughly $3.9 million uh, for the two propane options. And the uh, life cycle value cost for oil is five million one. Oh, That's right. Okay. So over the lifetime of the of the the uh, the useful life of the prod of the equipment, you're talking about almost a million one more mm -hmm. cost, and that's hmm. largely coming from the fuel costs. Okay. Hmm. Uh, the fuel cost for for oil, for the propane is roughly 2.5 million dollars and the and the fuel cost for oil over that period of time is 3.7 
So I'm sorry, uh, could you repeat that one? one two point five, three point seven. Two point five is the fuel is the fuel cost for either of the propane options, and three point seven is the fuel cost for uh, for for uh, oil. It's it's over the whole period of time that the boilers would operate. That's right. You know, the, the life of the boiler. The life right. of the boiler. Yeah, That's right. yeah. Correct. The estimated cost. Correct. Right. 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 So does this does this total the one point eight million include the cost of you just said something about renting tanks versus owning. So does that include purchasing these six it tanks? Does. It does. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not rental. The, That's right. They would be ours. It, so we uh, fuel cost is lower on delivery because we own them. You, you know, there's a little bit of a payback analysis that has to be done and if, the last project I did, we did it, and it made sense to own the tanks yourself. Um, and I'm assuming that's going to be the same here. Right. Uh, but we didn't get to that point with the supplier to see what their what their incremental increase is if you rented the tanks from them. Under the draft project budget, there's an asterisk at the bottom that says oil option used in this projection. Are those the oil costs or the propane costs? I thought that was the propane, propane. cost, yeah. but it says oil option used in this projection. Or maybe I'm not understanding what that asterisk Which statement means. means. Maybe it means something else? I don't know. Yeah, they, this is the, yeah, so this is I, um, again, I'm, I apologize for not getting the late information. All the figures changed, and um, I guess I didn't fix that. That's because I think the last, what happened is when I had the, the spreadsheet, um, I submitted it a week ago to, to, to Matt. Mm -hmm. um, yep. At that time, oil was more than the most expensive propane option, so that's why I picked that. And then when they gave me the new numbers last night, it actually moved around. Uh, the, op the propane option further away was a little bit more expensive, so that's why I threw that number in. Is that the oil number or the propane number? Propane. propane. Just, okay, so that, that asterisk is not correct. Yeah, it should correct. say propane. Well, it should say, it should say or it should say propane. Yeah. I was uh, trying to put in what I thought was the highest cost just to give you sort of a sense of... The, the biggest budget. The big, biggest budget projection that I could. Um, so I apologize. Sort of okay, that's okay. Yeah. So it's not oil and that's propane. But the number's correct. Correct. Yeah, that is right. Yeah. Okay. So can I just, I, I'm trying. You can. I never thought I would need to know about this. <laughs> I thought that's why I had a husband. Um, <laughs> the option O. Yes. O. Yep. Oil. There's no, except for replacing the buried tank, there's no other outside of the wall work. And so and most lines. of the, m most of what goes into that option O would most likely be reimbursable because it's in the walls of the the yes. building mm -hmm. or however you described it. The estimated value of the tank removal and replacement uh, was 40, I started just a moment ago, 45,000. So that's the only 47, out. Yeah, 47,000. 47, Remove and replace? Yeah. Hmm? So that's the removal and the replacement? Removal and replacement was right. about 47, so. Right. And that most likely is not reimbursable because right. it's outside of the wall. Right, right. So, so for each of the potentially again, the piping, but maybe not the tank. Okay, <laughs> give or take. So, give or take. <laughs> yes. So again, again, there's there is an estimate in here for each of those three options uh, that you can take a look at. But in terms of the work outside the boiler room itself, which is the site work, removal of the old tank either the installation of a new underground oil tank or the installation of six propane tanks in one of the two locations uh, would be roughly 47,000 for, um, for the oil. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's uh, 52,000 for the propane at the, at, the, at the front end of the school and about $110,000 for the propane in the yeah. far back corner. So. Mm -hmm. Um, in the scheme of the total project cost, you're talking about somewhere between 50, 50 to 100. and $110,000 of work that was, would be occurring outside the room that would be potentially ineligible. So the, the highest expense is in the, it's a P2 where we... Right. Yep. <laughs> wow. You would still need to take into account the lifetime cost. I mean, you're still oh, yeah, talking yeah. about 5.1 million, correct? 3.9 million, right. correct? So, and I and I think that to Sarah that. Point
point, Sarah. I think that's why you, I, I know the MSBA process is what it is and we can't change that. But in our particular situation, it would be very valuable and, you know, help a lot of different areas if we can have that conversation with Millville. And I, and I know it's our, at the end of the day, it's our decision, but I mean, I think we're really trying not to make things like that, like to have that open conversation. And over time, 5.1 million versus 3.9, but right now there's cost savings um, to do the oil. For the town. For, 50, the, for a short, you know, for a shorter term, um, which Might be may, may be beneficial to them in their current situation. Um, but, I, you know, I think it's just, I think we're, if, if we have to go one way or another tonight, I, you know, I just. We'd want to. <sighs> I wish there were somebody from Millville out But we there. lease I think before assuming building. that, though, we're going to want to, I mean, but I feel like they don't want to be we're here. That's penny why we're wise, here. pound foolish. Right. What is that? They Correct. Don't, we're, we right. don't want to assume that they're just going to want a short term. No, but I think that would be a nice discussion to be able to have is there a before we put it off. Is there a time for you guys? Like, you need this from us <laughs> Yeah, uh, we, we have a deadline to make the June board meeting. Mm -hmm. The MSPA only meets every two months. Right. Uh, <laughs> so it would be important for us to be in the June, but, mm -hmm. you know, if you say. Would, but at what point, at what point do you have to tell them that you want to be in the June meeting? Yeah, you have we, to tell them by May 1st? We've let them know that we're targeting that, but if for some reason you tell us, Slow down. We no, need I'm more just, time. I'm we thinking can if, certainly if tell we them. use the opportunity in the main meeting <laughs> to at least. We just need to talk uh, to someone. Not, uh, eighth. I just. I think right. that's why we're a committee. No, uh, this is eighth. this. These are our responsibilities to and, and to, to make the best decision order. for the town. That's why our towns elected us to oh, be here sister. and represent them. If you're comfortable um, with it. I'm not saying I'm <laughs> but I'm saying I, I we're Blackstone. sitting here saying, oh, we're just coming in from Millville here. There, there are there are four of us from Millville here. And I think that that it's our job. And and I, I. So I, I what I guess we could say is is this. Um, I mean, we need whether you guys could do it by you know uh, 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 having another meeting or having um, you know some sort of a, a teleconference to vote it. We do need a vote of the of the school committee, right? Uh, mm -hmm. As constituted, on an option. Right. Um, that is your preferred options so because we have to submit that with our package to the MSBA to say the school committee voted for this mm -hmm. right so right. Um, so putting aside how you would have that vote in terms of the sort of the time horizon that we're looking at we have to submit our package in order to be on the June uh, MSBA board meeting we have to submit our package by May 8th Oh, right. So we can um, okay and we were anticipating taking I think the selectmen meet on May 6th Okay. And so we were anticipating uh, going to that meeting with a, an option that had been approved by by the school committee, so that they could then react to that and tell us whether or not we could submit on the eighth. Okay. So, so I guess we, we what I'm saying is we have a little bit of time here um, that you guys could consider this. Do we have a meeting on the twenty fourth? <clears throat> we do. We do have a meeting on the twenty fourth, and we also there also is a board of selectmen FinCom potential joint meeting next week tuesday because of the holiday monday but are we so we're voting to give them our preferred choice mm -hmm. we're voting to give to the, them to give it to them and then they would tell the towns <laughs> town millville town we would take it to millville and ask for the selectmen's approval so Before going to MSP? I'm, I'm just gonna i'm going to say that i think our safe option is option o and taking the town into consideration because it's something that's already there. We're not, at, you know, we're we're worried right now that Mill is going to say, "Why is it so much money? And why and and why are we putting six propane tanks on your, on our property?" So, taking option O, we're really doing work on the inside of the building and getting a new oil tank, replacing what's already there. That's not disrupting their grounds or a, a tower that apparently needs to go on the property. <laughs> However, we are taking on the higher cost in the long run into our budget that we present to our towns every year over 
20 or 25 years was your 25. 25. Mm -hmm. So over 25 years, we're going to potentially spend 1.3 million more on fuel. The one thing I would say is that doesn't yeah. account for the energy efficiency, which Correct. you mentioned earlier. Which is that another, we more the maintenance. That's not actually factored in. What? So you think it would be higher? So, so it could be lower because you, the boilers. It's it was done in 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 the current already. consumption forward, but I you know the new boilers will be more efficient. Oh. So mm -hmm. you could hedge that. I, I don't know what that is. It's you know the boilers right now are running at eighty percent efficiency, oil fired boilers. Uh, the, they only can get up to about 86, 7 percent. Propane can operate at uh, 95 to 98 percent efficiency. So it's not, you know, it's hard. It, there's a lot of analysis that has to so be done. So in the conversation with the town of Millville, um, before the Board of Selectmen to put it on the warrant to even do the feasibility study, and at the town meeting to approve the feasibility study, um, there was a great discussion about the concern with oil and the repair to oil and the, the maintenance that oil is required. So they, they were particularly looking to see what their other options were. And I prefer the propane, but that's just. Are, are there, are, have you worked on any projects that have just replaced oil for oil? We've not done oil for no. oil, no. No, because it, it's not common anymore, is it? I mean, not. It's not to say that we, there's many projects like, out there that we know, haven't done. Our, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you could look at our, our experience and say that it was definitive for all. Yeah. But no. I, mean, I can't say that. that yeah. We okay. have not done oil for oil. Yeah. yeah. Did Matt, it's hard without Matt. Did Matt have a Yeah, he recommended feelings? the propane. Are we going to take a committee vote now or are we going to wait till the next meeting and talk to the board of selectmen in between? I suppose, could they defer to the select board? I mean, is that an option mm -hmm. that this? Yeah, we don't no. think we want to do that. No. So we have to, we're going to vote now. We have to, do that. Okay. We have to vote. I don't know. I like it. P2 also. You do as well? I think it, I think if we do if we do the propane, I, I think P P two is the mm -hmm. yeah. I would not do propane if it's P one. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much P one is off the mm -hmm. discussion. We've all agreed. Agreed. Yes. You yeah, those are the yeah. tanks next to the building. Yeah. yeah. Nobody wants that. Yeah. So it's the issue of P two or oh. replace oil with oil. And I just, I don't know of homeowners who are replacing oil with oil. I don't know of, of anybody who's put. I do in worry that the that town will not like P2, though, because of putting the tanks, tanks out on and the, the property. The $110,000 cost that would probably be funded at 100% in their capital lines. For the, yeah, for the work. But I like the efficiency side of propane as well. <laughs> which would affect our school budget. And the, the net impact is, is really $50,000 to the town. Correct. So it's 50, 50 for the oil or the yeah. propane up close and 110 for the propane further away. So yeah. you're only talking about $55,000 is the difference in what might. Oh, right. Yeah, it's a good point. Right. Right. You know, it's so not 100, right. At a minimum, you're going to have $50,000 of ineligible cost. Correct. Right. In the worst case, you'd have 110, so, you know, for the furthest, the tanks, the furthest away. So the incremental cost is $55,000. Right. Matt, for what it's worth, Matt liked option P2. It's worth. It's worth so yeah. can we make it contingent on our town's approval for? Uh, if they don't approve it. Well, the town will have to approve they it. Have to. Uh, yeah. The so I mean, you know, I, I think vote your conscience today. Vote, what, vote what, for what you want, and then we'll take it to the select board, and then the select board is going to have to vote whether they want to appropriate the funds for it. Um, you but, know, uh, and at that point, we'll we'll sort of find out yeah. how they feel and, about it. And that. you you already have 
Uh, you're already on their agenda for their May 8th meeting, or you will? We are. Oh, it's, you are. It's an, uh, I think it's, it's, I think it's May 6th. May 6th. Um, and it, again, same, it's a similar presentation. We're just asking yep. for their preferred option. Yep. They're not, there's no vote of money. It's just so that we can go to the MSBA with some, uh, you know, uh, acknowledgement that the town has, we presented it, it's been considered, and this is the preference. Yep. And, okay. and so we have I'm what just trying to get a timeline. May May sixth with Millville. Yeah. June something with MSBA. Do we have a meeting? So if we vote something, and Millville yeah. says the opposite, could we then reconsider? I mean, because we this ha something has to be done. I think we're all in agreement that some project has to be done with respect to boilers at Millville Elementary. And so while we can make our decision, the reality is M Millville has to then vote. I mean, the, what they're doing May 6th is sort of getting their opinion as well. But at, at the end of the day, they have to vote uh, to appropriate money. Correct. And so if we're not on the same page, then we're going to hit a roadblock further up and, and we have a bigger problem to, you know, with a shorter timeline to fix because M MSBA is going to have some final timelines that we have to stay in. So if they meet May 6th, what is our next meeting after that? Could we possibly just, I mean, if we had to, could we get it on the agenda to reconsider if we needed to in time to give yeah, the deadline for the MSBA submission is uh, May 8th. Okay. So if, if there were a meeting like a day or two later, I mean, I could certainly ask uh, as Same long day as you we. Phone it. I, I'm just one. I mean, I just. Submit everything. They may. I mean, they we may hope give it all goes smoothly. And our biggest but concern is not delaying the project. Right. The, that's the what I'm saying. of this project. It's not that it's not going to happen with one mm -hmm. or the other, but with us making the wrong choice tonight, are we? Are we? We have a meeting May 8th. We have May 8th. I was just going to say that we have May 8th. So. Do we do May 7th? But it sounds like someone mentioned that. On the 22nd, you might have a joint meeting of the select board and the FinCom folks. Ne next Tuesday. Next Tuesday? The 16th. 16th. Is that a. a we are on the agenda. Yeah, the school committee's not there. Though. Oh, okay. We're not no, it's not a agenda. joint meeting with us. It's a joint meeting between their finance committee and their board of selectmen. But we're, um, we don't, we're not on their agenda. Not now. There's time to be put on, Lori. Right? What? The, we could there is time. Before the and also the um, and head then custodian we meet April did check in with us on he prefers the propane option. He did. <laughs> oh, he okay. Does. Then. Well, I think that's important, too. That is yeah, important. He just called. Yeah, he's watching. <laughs> oh, he's watching. <laughs> okay. I, I do. I mean, I think that's important. He's, he's the guy who's. He doesn't want silos. That's what the texting was. He didn't want silos. <laughs> I'm good that I, I spoke very highly of him. <laughs> <laughs> <What's perfect? laughs> okay. Well, uh, that's, uh, that's awesome. uh, uh, <laughs> so I will make a motion that we accept we are moving forward with the option P2 uh, tank placement and the propane. propane. Oh, okay, let's per green. So, <laughs> per green. Per green. <laughs> Second. So, okay. Uh, Moved by Aaron, seconded by Tara. More discussion. Tammy, you were about to say. I was just so. going to try to move it along. No. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you. Okay. All those in favor of moving the project forward, following the guidelines set for P2 propane boilers with tanks on the outer edge of the world, um, of the ledge, say aye. 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 Opposed? There you go. Great. Thank you very much. Did we need to do a special wording, or was that that good? Uh, they'll just, uh, yeah. we'll get a copy of your meeting minutes. They just need to know that yeah. we were in front of you, you met, and we you have a We approve option. moving forward. So that's perfect. There's no specific language. Okay. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank I know you. there is later on. Yeah, there is later on. Later on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right, so this goes with this. All right. Uh, next up, we have the discussion of our 2019-20 school year calendar. No major uh, changes on this at this point. Um, 
So the first day of school for students would be August 28th, um, with that Friday being part of the Labor Day recess weekend and that Monday the 2nd. Uh, and without snow, which it never does around here, <laughs> the final day would be June 16th. And it would include a February vacation from the 17th to the 21st and an April vacation from the 20th to the 24th. Oh. <laughs> Anybody have any questions about this calendar? Oh, sorry. No, I'm fine. It's all right. You I saw it. See. Okay. <laughs> Anyone? All right. I'll mm -hmm. entertain a motion to approve the 2019-20 uh, academic calendar. So moved. Mm -hmm. Moved by Tara. Second. Second by Karen. Any further discussion? That is tentative to it is, negotiation. It is tentative pending our negotiations. I'm having a moment seeing my daughter, my first graduating oh, graduation child's date. graduation mm -hmm. date here. Is that the blue, the bright blue? Ooh. I'm getting old. We can ask her mm -hmm. how many more days left in the graduation. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah, well, 180 mm -hmm. plus 25. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they don't Not 180. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Okay. Uh, next, um, we need to do our annual vote on school choice. Uh, one of the things uh, I would ask um, uh, the committee to consider uh, is to uh, maintain our school choice opportunities um, for kids to choice into our school district. But I would like to um, ask the committee for some time with the policy subcommittee to perhaps develop um, some framing around that uh, to be voted on, voted on, pardon me, and discussed at a later date. But uh, would absolutely want to keep our school choice options open for, for all kids. So I'll entertain a motion to participate in the school choice process uh, for the 1920 school year. So moved. Second. Moved by Tara, seconded by Karen. Any discussion? And this just allows people, it, uh, it allows, allows them us to, to school to, yes, come to, in, yeah. to come, to come to in. Us. Yeah. Uh -huh. Allows them to come here. Um, and what we would ask the policy committee to do is look at are there parameters around that um, timing wise. And it still, even though you participate, still allows if a class is full not to take That's any right. particular classes. Mm -hmm. So the policy, the state policy allows that. Any other questions? Okay. It's been moved and seconded to approve the school choice option for the Blackstone Millville Regional School District for the 2019-20 school year. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions. Okay. Great. Thank you. So approved. You want the wording back? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, to this uh, to the committee and to the community uh, a, a new member for our team that will be starting with us July 1st um, as our new HR specialist. Our first HR specialist, uh, human resource specialist for the Blackstone Millville Regional School District, uh, Miss Natasha Hersom. And if Natasha, if you want to join us up at, at uh, the table up front for just a moment, um, Natasha comes to us uh, very, very highly recommended. Um, Natasha has a uh, BS in business administration and a man and management in human resources, uh, and also has a very wide. Uh, variety of uh, experience and uh, deep experience in HR from operations to benefits to onboarding and and everything in between so um, we could not be more thrilled that you're here uh, we had a really rigorous process um, we had um, a panel that represented um, many different stakeholders from across the district um, we screened over 80 applications and had two rounds of uh, initial interviews and two rounds of final interviews. And uh, I'm very excited that Natasha uh, has risen to the surface. I think she is going to do incredible work in our personnel uh, department, soon to be personnel department within yeah. BMRSD. So Natasha, if you'd like to say a few words, welcome. 
Thank you. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Um, this is a very interesting process as far as I haven't been involved with education, so it's uh, very interesting. Um, it's nice to meet everyone. I'm excited. I know that there's a number of projects that we can be working on, so I'm excited. I'm excited to be working with Dr. DeFalco and his team. So thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. So welcome. Welcome. And I thank you. Look forward to long collaborations. <laughs> <laughs> a lot to do. A lot to do. <laughs> yep. Um, a couple of other quick just updates on uh, some of the searches that we've been running. Um, our elementary principal uh, search for the complex. Um, we uh, did have a couple of finalists that were sent forward. Uh, we have decided to continue our search. Um, we will have another round of interviews on Monday, April 22nd. Um, and uh, while we certainly that you know the screening committee has been very hard at work um, identifying uh, very strong candidates I think we need to continue to search to find just that right match for what we needed the complex to support all children and really start to accelerate our our work with teaching and learning so um, we really appreciate everybody's uh, efforts and patience as we continue to move through this uh, and we're excited for the next round of interviews on April 22nd, uh, which we have already confirmed uh, quite a few candidates will be coming in for that. So we continue our search, and we will find the right match for sure. Um, our Director of Le uh, Learner Support Services, just an update on that position as well. Uh, we have also gone through um, a round of interviews, uh, and we did entertain a couple of finalists. Um, I swear it's not me, <laughs> but uh, we ha did have uh, one candidate uh, withdraw from the search and felt that we should continue looking. And so we have reposted, um, and uh, we hope to have a decision uh, in terms of what direction to move in by the end of this week. Uh, quite frankly, uh, we really need to get planning with our work, in particular around special education, uh, programming and placement and support services. So. Um, um, we are very eager to move this process forward as well, and uh, we'll have an update uh, for the committee and community uh, in May, um, if not before then, around what, what exactly we need to do uh, moving forward. But we do hope that by Friday, we'll have some more concrete next steps ironed out with that. Um, any questions on any of the searches? Yes, I do. On elementary principal search, um, so finalists were moved to a stage where they interacted with you. Yes. Um, and so now that we're moving on, where is that pool coming of from? who you're interviewing mm -hmm. coming from? So the, the uh, search committee did a really excellent job of creating um, kind of parameters, if you will, around um, key qualities or experiences that they were looking for uh, both pools, the first pool and the second pool of um, candidates to, to possess. Um, and uh, used essentially um, kind of a rubric, if you will, to help identify those candidates. Um, in that process, um, I do think that there were some candidates, um, God bless you, that may have been overlooked. Um, and so, um, for various reasons, um, and so I think um, we need to continue to keep the bar very high, but I, but I do think there are multiple pathways to a principalship that sometimes aren't um, necessarily um, considered, and I'll give you an, uh, for instance. So um, as we know, the complex is an elementary school, and so one of the criteria that the search committee was looking for was somebody that had elementary leadership experience. Well, that qualification by itself automatically ruled out all middle school experience. So we had qualified sitting principals at the middle school level that were not considered. It was pretty heavily well weighted, right. too. So if you had... But, but how do you bring in an administrator that has no early childhood into that position? Doesn't mean they don't have... Uh, so I started... So, you, so you're saying they didn't work in that setting or they didn't have yeah so so for instance I'll use myself as an example I started as an elementary school teacher and then became a middle school principal so as a middle school principal I, I may not have and didn't make the cut for the elementary principal interviews here 
because I was a sitting middle school principal. Even though you did have elementary experience. So you didn't, yeah. you, you're what it wasn't you're weighted as heavy. Different. I think that's probably the best way the, to say The that. search committee didn't take your elementary teaching experience into consideration? Correct. Was it weighted as heavy okay. as, is that fair, Sarah, to say? So yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like if you had a huge amount of elementary school teaching experience, it counted, it kind of counted twice because it also counted as just teaching experience. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but it, it, it tended to favor significantly anyone who had elementary. elementary. And just as a disclosure, I started on the original screening committee and then Sarah, <laughs> we, we switched off. Yeah. So um, I, I did see the rubric, so I, I know what it is you speak of. Um, <laughs> So, so just to confirm, you're not putting this out for a third time. You're going to relook at the the pools and sort of recalibrate the thinking, the overall thinking. And yes, and the, there are also choices. a couple of candidates that could not make um, the initial interviews, okay. um, and um, they have they weren't rescheduled. So we did call those individuals as well to bring them in on the 22nd. Mm -hmm. And the and the folks who are on, who were on the last print the planning committee, the search, right, committee. search committee, yeah. not planning committee, <coughs> search committee, they have been invited to be part of the new process of the interview of the other these people. Okay. Yes, uh, but I will say if if um, we were nearing um, the and end some of can April, make it, right? Some so can't, some right? can't. We're, we have we have we have to hold these interviews on the twenty sure. second. So uh, there are a few individuals uh, that are not able to make it, but we, we, need, to, we need to move this forward. Okay. We posted, the original posting was January 17th. Wow. So okay. this is, mm -hmm. this needs to move. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Um, just a quick update on a, a couple of uh, key items that we've been working on. Um, as you are aware, Johns Hopkins University has uh, been working closely with the district, uh, looking really at three different areas of our work. Um, one, studying our written curriculum, which we heard a little bit about tonight in science, but our written curriculum, our taught curriculum, and our learned curriculum. Um, so that's what's on paper, what's uh, actually being taught by the teachers, and what is actually being learned by kids. And so you would assume and hope that those three things are all in alignment, right? Uh, but not always the case. And so, as you know, alignment is something that is really important that we are working on, um, not just vertically, as Mr. Tringali mentioned earlier, but also horizontally across, you know, all fifth grades, so to speak, or all fourth grades. Um, so that's one piece of the work. The second piece of the work uh, is um, really looking at our instructional practices. And so they did spend three days in the district visiting every school and spent quite a bit of time uh, visiting classrooms and taking a look again at the instructional practices, but also the depth of learning that the kids are, are doing uh, through, that, um, through that class time. And then the third part of the work that they uh, are currently doing is something called knowledge mapping, which is actually pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Uh, so essentially what we are doing is we are looking at all of our literature so the, the text that the kids are reading, grades K to five, uh, which is, as you can imagine, a lot. And so what uh, we have done is essentially working with the principals and teachers narrowed down that to a sampling of five pieces of like big text that the kids spend a lot of time on, novels, that kind of thing. And what they are doing is they're looking at the level of complexity that is required for our kids to be able to read and understand and apply the learnings from that book and they're going to map all of that out for us. Uh, and what will happen, um, that's the last phase of their study. Uh, and as you remember, uh, if you remember, we uh, had written a grant to the Department of Education to have all of this covered through a grant. So none of this is coming from our budget, about $51,000 uh, in grant funding for this. They will be coming back up to the committee uh, and they will deliver a full report uh, to the committee on their, on their findings. And then as a leadership team, we will be having a conversation around, well, so what, now what? And so how do we use this to really accelerate the work within our district improvement strategy? So I just wanted to give a very brief update on that uh, because, as you know, we've been 
kind of talking about it uh, quite a bit this year, but we are nearing uh, the end of, of their study with us. Um, so as soon as we have that final report, we will have them before the committee. Um, the, other, the other piece to loop back to that we spent a lot of time talking about was the summit learning model. Um, and um, while there is certainly interest in um, kind of learning more about that, uh, you know, I, I would definitely agree uh, with, with many of our um, stakeholders, school committee, teachers, principals, that we're not quite ready to launch yet. And so what we are going to do is something called Year Zero. And so Year Zero is just a way of kind of outlining, we need more time to study this. And we need more time to play around uh, with the uh, different projects um, that are in and that exist within the platform of Summit. So uh, we are working very closely with um, uh, Donna Stone, who I know has been before the committee before, to look at how can our teachers um, who are, you know, who we're not ready to adopt that model yet, uh, which I certainly understand, but how can we still get them access to the materials and the projects so they can kind of tinker with it? They can take a project on waves that they have to teach anyways, pull it out of that summit module, and let the kids try it. Um, and really get a good feel, a better feel for that. We're also looking to see how can we study um, um, schools that are going to be launching this upcoming school year. So what does that year one look like for schools? So we can learn from some of their, um, you know, some of their implementation struggles. And so um, I think it's a smart plan. I think it makes sense um, to spend more time with it and make sure it's something we really want to do take on as a community before we make that final decision. Are you aware of any schools locally that are going to be year one schools? Uh, they are in Connecticut and, and southern New Hampshire, okay. so not super far from us. Uh, it's definitely schools that we could visit within probably 90 minute, okay. 90 minute ride. Right. I'd still like to see um, MCAS data, maybe in the fall, if we can remember, mm -hmm. like the Framingham schools. Yes, that, it's a great point. The schools that are in Massachusetts, um, just where they fall. That is a really great point, Aaron. Uh, one of the schools in Framingham, and I don't recall uh, which one, but they have adopted it completely. Mm. Um, like they are wall-to-wall -wall summit. That's what they do. So, uh, and they have been doing that for a couple of years now. So I think we probably would get a good snapshot yeah. of the data after a few years of implementation. I'd, I'd be interested. I feel like I might forget that I wanted to see it, but if you could remember, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wrote it down. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we are still pursuing this year zero option um, at the high school, middle school levels. And so once we know, once Donna Stone gives you the information as to sort of what's available, then you'll put it out to teachers and basically say, here's, here's some resources available. Who wants to try it first? Yeah. Or so who wants to use it to supplement what you're doing? Or mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, um, Donna has been working uh, very closely with the principals. Okay. So they have been looking at, um, you know, it, the feedback we got from the teachers was, this is super interesting. We definitely want to learn more. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, what the principals have, have done with their conversations with Donna is try to define that learn more. Like, what does that actually look like? And so Donna has laid out with the principals, um, some different options but part of it is exactly what you mentioned and I think you know when we when we think about rolling out or potentially rolling out a model like this I think points of entry into this is really important so um, while we certainly would give all teachers an opportunity to try different projects that exist within there we are looking um, very specifically at like grade six and grade nine right. Mm -hmm. right so like what would those points of entry be for for our system and if we, if we were to build a pathway, what would that pathway look like? How big would it be? How many kids would it include, et cetera? But I think if, you know, if we're still uh, feeling a little uncertain and need to learn more, then, then we do that. That's mm -hmm. okay. But I think, I mean, the, I am very happy that is your recommendation um, because I think we have a lot going on. You have brought lots of new initiatives, not, lots of new thinking, and I think, um, if we can have teachers kind of want to do it versus saying, okay, you're going to do it this year. I think the, 
enthuse if if it works well, the enthusiasm that's going to come out of that is going to be so much more valuable than okay, you forced me to do this. It wasn't that bad. Mm. I'm going to talk to my neighbor about it. I think when when they want to do it, and then they're like, wow, this is really cool, or kids really love this. That is, you know, that publicity is going to be much better if we do decide to go larger. You know, yeah, agreed, so. agreed. And I think one of the things that's important to <clears throat> note exactly on that point, um, I've said repeatedly to the administrators, to teachers, to the union leadership, to the committee, this is not something we would ever make somebody do. Mm -hmm. This is something people have to want to do and, and take on and try on and, and, uh, and you know, it, because you're right, things don't work, they won't work well if it, mm -hmm. if it happens. I mean, we don't want to take that approach. Mm -hmm. There are some things within our work that we have to do, Yeah. right? This isn't one of those things, though. Mm -hmm. But I do want to just, you know, kind of some, I know some of you were able to attend the Blackstone Finance Subcommittee meeting the other evening, and one of the things that came up was around school choice and kids that are coming in and kids that are leaving and how do we keep the kids that are leaving. And I think as we continu continue to think about our own work, Options. we are going to need to be thinking outside the box of how we diversify our, our own portfolio of options for students and families. And, you know, again, not hanging my hat solely on this by any sense, but I think we just have to keep exploring mm -hmm. what those other might look like. Great. Yep. Great. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Um, and that's a good segue into the um, career pathways uh, work. And so um, this work has been under construction for uh, quite a few months now. And uh, what I'm going to ask the committee for this evening is, um, is to consider uh, and vote, uh, hopefully, uh, for a, um, a small amount, a reasonably small amount of money for us to spend on a uh, training program around home health aides. And I'll explain what I'm, why that is in a moment. Um, that is approximately $6,000. Uh, it's not a huge ask. But I do want to use this as an opportunity to discuss a much bigger piece of work that we are, that we are taking on at the high school and we are taking on, to be very frank, within the Blackstone Valley School Districts, plural, uh, within, within the group of us. And so, um, as the committee is aware, uh, I am part of the Blackstone Valley Superintendent Consortium. And there are about 12 towns that are part of this group that range from Bellingham to Hopedale, all the way up to Millbury, Sutton, Douglas, Uxbridge, Northbridge, and, you know, and everything in between. I think folks know the Blackstone Valley communities. And um, one of the challenges that we face in Blackstone Valley is, um, our, is, right, it's a blessing, but it's also a challenge, is our size. And so all of those communities have school populations that range between, you know, 1,300 kids up to about 2,200 kids and kind of everything in between. Um, and all of our high schools with that are reasonably around the same size. So somewhere between 400 and 600 kids. And so while that is a, a uh, I think, in many ways, a significant strength of ours because we really get to know the kids, their families, their strengths and opportunities for growth, um, as the committee knows firsthand, it's also a challenge to bring in really creative and different programs because um, our school is small. And in a 425 student high school, it's very difficult to build four pathways, five pathways, uh, um, of career development into that size of a building. One of the things we have done very well, um, and I know you've heard me say this before repeatedly, is the college preparedness piece of this work. Um, you know, on any, any given year we have between 75 and 85 percent of our kids going to college um, that have been accepted into a two or four year uh, school. And I've, I know uh, you've heard me share before uh, an anecdote from the president of Worcester State who said, you know, what are you doing in BMR? Because your kids are getting in and out of here in four years. You've had one kid that has not made it through in four years. He actually gave me the name and we're, we're, we found him. But <laughs> <laughs> so we're not letting this child get away. Um, but um, so, you know, I think we've done, and the, there's always more work to do in that piece of it, but I think we're doing well there with our AP initiatives and, and, and through all of the academic side of that work. The part that we've struggled is with career development. And so um, our goal at, uh, at, at uh, BMR ultimately is that we will have every child graduate with their diploma and. 
And so that and is an acceptance to a two or four year school and or uh, an acceptance into a certification program for career and workforce development and or with a certification to enter right into the workforce. And so I just want to take a, a, a minute to explain some of the work that we're doing around this um, so folks will really get a sense of where we're trying to go. Um, the, the certification and career development work doesn't just happen. And so we are doing uh, some very intentional um, planning now to open up opportunities for our kids that, have, that has not existed before at, at our high school. And so I'm going to give you a very concrete example. Um, we are looking uh, to start in the fall an advanced manufacturing, uh, advanced manufacturing one. That's the actual name of the course. Um, you are probably wondering well, how on earth are we going to do that without an advanced manufacturing lab and equipment and 3D printer and all the other things we need, the, the, quite frankly, over $100,000 worth of equipment we need. Uh, what we have done in the Blackstone Valley Superintendent Consortium is we have started to pool our resources. We, have, we, we are working very collaboratively to say what is it that all of our high schools can open up and offer to each other. We've got to start working together and not against each other. And so a prime example of this is this partnership around the launch of Advanced Manufacturing One, which will be a fall course we will offer next year. Each high school in the Black Swan Valley Consortium will have two to three seats available to them. There'll be a small cost, won't be a significant expense, um, and the course will be taught by an advanced manufacturing teacher from Uxbridge High School. I actually visited his classroom. Yes, I do learning walks in other people's <laughs> high schools too. Uh, and visited his classroom on Friday with other superintendents, had a chance to meet him, meet his kids, and really see this work in action. Um, that course will be taught at the, the Ed Hub at the Chamber of Commerce, the Black Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce, who does have all the equipment, the 3D printers and all the other equipment that's needed to run that. It is going to be a blended learning course where some of that work will be done online. And through eight Saturday sessions in the fall semester uh, will be the face-to-face -face time where the kids from across the districts will come together to meet with their teacher from Uxbridge to do the work. So, Essentially, how this, is, how this will work, the Blackstone Valley Consortium will actually pay, we do have a small budget, um, we will pay the uh, fee to the Ed Hub of about $3,000, and then each district will divvy up the cost for the teacher, uh, you know, based on the number of seats, to actually pay the, the, the teacher costs and all the equipment costs and such that we're going to need for that. This course will then turn into advanced manufacturing too. So these kids will travel as a cohort uh, into a second semester of advanced manufacturing. And the idea is that we will then start advanced manufacturing one again, right? And start another cohort of kids. Um, this is one small piece of what this will look like. Um, we, are, we have also collaborated on the transportation, right? So, you know, you might be wondering, or those at home might be wondering, well, how are we going to cover the transportation costs for this? Well, again, um, we are pooling our resources. We have vans that we can use. Hopedale has buses that they can use. They have their own transportation. Uh, and we will cost share the fuel expense and we will cost share the driver um, for that so we can get our kids to and from. We are looking to start this with our freshmen. So for those eighth graders that are thinking, I don't want to go to BMR High School because they don't have career opportunities or career pathways for me, that is not true. We are building those pathways now so that we will have an opportunity for, for those kids coming in. Now, to, to expand upon that, this is just the beginning of that work. We have also come together as a Blackstone Valley superintendent group and written uh, letters to our local senators and representatives, uh, all, have which, uh, all that of which have, have uh, confirmed receipt of these letters. These letters are asking for $100,000 in startup money for this initiative, um, or for this, for, the, for this type of portfolio development work. They have been incredibly enthusiastic and excited about this work, so much so uh, that we learned recently that the chair of the, education, the Joint Education Committee from, um, from uh, the state will be meeting with 
uh, this subgroup of Blackstone Valley superintendents that have taken this work on, of which mm -hmm. I am part of that group. Oh. There is a lot of buzz about this. Uh, this is different. This is very cutting edge, and this shows true collaboration across the district to try to get something in place that we know our kids desperately need. Um, so in addition to this, we are also pursuing um, uh, another opportunity uh, within BMR where we are looking to apply next fall um, for a grant around the development of a biomedical pathway. And so, as you know, the biomedical field is a booming field in the Worcester area, Worcester County. And so, in addition to the advanced manufacturing, we are also looking at pursuing a grant opportunity for a biomed uh, pathway in the high school through Project Lead the Way. What I think is most exciting about this is this is just the beginning of this work. Mm -hmm. We have surrounding high schools that have already have established pathways through Project Lead the Way uh, in computer science. Uh, uh, engineering and, and many others, um, um, forensic science, that was the other one that, that was really very cool that I could just see kids getting really jazzed over. And so um, we are collaborating in a manner that over time we will be able to open up these opportunities for all of our kids. So you can remain a BMR kid and take an advanced manufacturing course. You can remain a BMR kid and take a biomed pathway. Um, and so this is only going to expand from there. The, the reason that I opened it with this discussion around the home health aid piece, which you might be wondering, like, where are we making the connection here, um, is this is great for the kids on our front end that are entering in, but we need something for the kids on our back end who are leaving. We have 25 students that are graduating from BMR with no post-grad plans. That is not okay. We cannot just hand a diploma to our graduates and say, good luck, take care. Um, so what we are looking to do is twofold. Um, we are taking a group of students uh, to Job Corps, which is a program that is run out of North Grafton. That is, a, there is a post high school graduate program that runs a variety of career technical certification programs. And if you have a child that qualifies for free or reduced lunch, it is free. There is zero cost to this program. Um, so we are going to be taking a group of students, uh, approximately, I believe, 15, um, in the middle of May to the open house, a group of seniors, to the open house at Job Corps to pursue some different certification programs. Okay. With the Home Health Aid program, we are looking to purchase that program as something we can run in-house. We can do that here. Once we buy it, we own it. It is a blended learning model that essentially has 59 hours of blended learning kind of online modules and 16 hours of face-to-face -face time with an RN, of which we already have a couple of interested nurses to jump on board with this. How many hours of the face-to-face? -face? Uh, 50, I'm um, sorry, 16. 16. 16. It's a total okay. 75 hours. So what we are looking to do is run this, and again, our contribution right now to this Blackstone Valley group, let's open some of the seats up. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna fill the 10 seats with just BMR kids. Uh, we probably will fill maybe two or three in this first go around, but that's okay. We can open it up to Hopedale, Bellingham, Sutton, Douglas, Uxbridge, and we can fill that class and charge a small fee, um, you know, to help contribute and give back uh, to, our, to our district as well. Um, and with that, I'm already um, in the process of scheduling um, meetings with the CEOs of two, one in Milford, one in Hopedale, um, agencies that are desperately needing home health aids so that they will come and meet with our kids and say, we have a job for you when you're finished with this program. So will that program give them a certification? We will give them a certification through this, yes, through this yes. particular program. There, there's a home health aid cert that um, will be granted to them through the state at the end of this. And, and look, I think, I think the bottom line is nobody assumes you'll be a home health aid forever. I mean, you could right. be, right? Yeah. But it's the first step. Yeah. It's giving our kids Something, an opportunity a at a real career, um, or a leg up. And, when, and, I, and I really hope our community is listening to this because this is the best investment we can make. These kids leave us in 12th grade and, you know, for lack of a better term, we turn them out back into the community. Well, what better way to put them out back into the community with true workforce and career development skills where they can either stay in the Blackstone Valley area and work at some of our advanced manufacturing uh, job opportunities, of which we have many uh, open opportunities through that, 
or go into, you know, for this particular example, the healthcare okay. field. Um, I know that's a lot to take in, and I do have a very kind of formal presentation that I, I, I want to go over with the committee in May that has goals and objectives and timelines and all of that. But I did want to launch um, this this evening so that the community can start discussing. And are you looking for a, a motion tonight from the committee to approve the home health care? Yes. Yep. For the $6,000 so that we can spend it on that. We don't have a line for that. We don't, you know, we've never... So, so that would come out of supply. We have a curriculum supply line, which we I could use. But where I, would you? But it's a brand new budget item, yeah. and I thought it yes. would be important to get the committee to weigh in on that. Do we need to say where it comes from, or do we just make a motion to approve? Yeah, as long as he knows where. Yeah, as long as you know yeah, that we'll there's somewhere that we have it because yeah. we didn't oh, over approve right. line. Right. right. That's yeah, right. We don't. Yeah. Thank you. It's just a new idea. It's a new item. It's, it's something we've never. I think so. it's exciting. What? I think it's exciting. very exciting. Very exciting. I think. I, and I, much needed. I particularly like that it's tied to a state certification. So there's something in your hand when you leave. And yeah. So I have one one question that doesn't really go with the home health care. And I know sure. you're going to eventually give us a, like you just said, a full presentation. But how many seats, and looking forward to next fall, Advanced Manufacturing 1, how many seats would we potentially have for our kids two in that? Three? Well, it's about two or three in the first, in the first um, go around. Would it be first come, first served? Or uh, you know, we haven't, teased out the, yeah, we haven't teased out that process yet. We're so... Um, excited and eager to get, to it, kind go, of get yeah. it you know yeah. to get it going I don't we haven't kind of delved into the weeds of that yeah. but that's a really great thing that will have to be a great point that will have to be addressed for sure and would they exp if it's successful in the first year would they then perhaps be able to offer two cohorts well, at a time or without a doubt I mean that the plan is that we will um, over time to be very frank what we asked the legislators for uh, was some startup money so that the Blackstone Valley Superintendent Group can actually work with a coordinator that will pull all of these different, because um, imagine just a coordination for this, right? Mm -hmm. Think about what that takes yeah. in terms of getting this kind of together and off the ground with never mind the actual logistics, but with the curriculum, the instruction, the teacher, you know, the whole, right? So there's a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, what we are looking to do is start this one course bring it into advanced manufacturing too, and then start to expand and run as many um, um, cohorts of kids mm -hmm. as we can and that want to. Well, what, you, what you're doing is you're giving the students some huge opportunities, but you're also giving the community a, a, a trained workforce. Yep. We can't, they, they, the lo local, and I, I know that this isn't news to anyone here, but they can't fill their positions. Yeah. Right. We're not turning out, and I say respectfully, but we're not, the, the, the career and technical school is not turning out kids that are going into the, they're going into college, which is great and that's fine, but the problem is so are our kids. Right. So when you have our local businesses that are looking to fill these positions, the, the, the workforce isn't there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. So we have kids that want to do that work, mm -hmm. and it's time that we find a way to figure that out. And that's what we're trying Help to do, do with it. that. Yep. Um, hmm. We'll entertain a motion to approve the funding to start the project. So moved. Moved by Sarah. Is there a second? Second, second by Aaron. Any other discussion? Okay, it's been moved and seconded to fund $6,000 towards a home health care <coughs> aid uh, certification program this academic year. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, abstentions. Okay. Great. Um, next in your packet, you will see um, the job description for the position of planning, teaching, and learning coach. I know the uh, through the reorganization, the, the positions were approved, but um, in front of you is the actual job description for that. Um, and I do want to also note that um, I did uh, promise make a, and make a commitment to the Unit A Executive Board that I would send them this job description and I have. 
So okay. they, they also have this. I know that that was something that was important for them. Um, so I did want to share that with the committee. And this will be posted internally, externally? We're going to post it internally first. And to be frank, I hope we can fill it internally. I, I hope that we have folks that are interested. This is a really um, very powerful um, position as far as impact on kids goes. Um, so we'll, we will post it internally first um, and then take it from there. And that will be done soon? As soon as the committee approves <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the job description. <laughs> no, sorry. We, we will post, um, <laughs> and we'll, you know, we know everything is contingent on budget right now. Okay. So <coughs> we'll sure, yeah. sure, sure. Motion to approve the, job the position and job description. And this is a district-wide position? It's, um, we were going to look for, yeah, so the way it's written now, it's the, it's like the, the general mm -hmm. position, but we will have one at the elementary level and we'll have one at the secondary level. So, but the position is district, so once you have people in place, if you see some need to shift, you're going to be covered, so you're not yes. pigeonholed into a grade or a yes. building. Yes, right. absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that's a great question, yeah. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay, so moved by Sarah, seconded by Tara. Oh, that rhymes. <laughs> uh, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, and the last go. big item, uh, or item on my uh, specific report, is just the um, review and approving the change. Uh, I'm going to uh, propose a change to the school committee for the 18 19 school year. Um, and in your packet, you will see a calendar uh, for this school year. Um, and <clears throat> as you know, uh, we have had one snow day uh, this year, which is unbelievable. And I'm really glad we don't live in the Midwest because we'd have way more <laughs> yeah. uh, if that were the case. But um, we have one, and that one snow day puts <laughs> us uh, into the Monday of that next week. Um, and so <clears throat> initially we were scheduled to be done on uh, June, Friday, June 14th. The one snow day pushed us into Monday, um, June 17th, which is scheduled as a half day. And uh, the contract, the teacher's contract, um, has very specific language uh, that states, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but um, the superintendent can uh, use if he or she chooses to, the professional development day in May, which we have on our calendar for the Friday that is connected to Memorial Day, as a school day if needed. So what I am proposing to the committee is that we make that change and we move that half day that is scheduled right now for Monday, June 17th to the Friday before Memorial Day in May and we have a half day, which is right now is scheduled for professional development. Kids are supposed to be off. What I'm proposing is we use that, uh, that Friday for a half day for students and then a half day in the afternoon for teachers uh, for professional development. And then that will make the last day of school Friday, June 14th. It will be a full day for children <coughs> and, for st and for staff uh, on that Friday, June 14th. So you would need to approach the union for a memo of understanding to be a full day. That is correct. For unit A and unit B, uh, which is both the teachers association and the uh, assistant principals. Uh, unit C does not have language around that and follows suit with the other two, but unit B, our assistant principals unit, says very specifically in the language that they follow the same schedule as unit A. Mm. So I want to make sure that we have everything in place and that there will be no issues moving forward uh, with either of the bargaining units. Comments? So with that being said, <coughs> would it just be easier to keep it as a last day instead of asking them for um, uh, keeping it as a half day on the 14th? So Whereas mm -hmm. when we have a snow day or a delay, we're, we're missing that time instead of getting the MOA. So the challenge with, or, or the, uh, the issue with that, that would make the Friday before 24th. Memorial Day weekend, which is May 24th, a full day for kids, 
Right now, it's a, it's a day off for kids. And so looking at it from the parental perspective, my concern with that was if families were planning on, you know, leaving to go wherever for that particular weekend that they might leave, you know, just after lunch or sometime around noon or that kind of thing, uh, I, that also would mean that we would forego, we would forego any professional development with right. teachers. And I do think we need so to... I'm suggesting leaving the last day as a half day. No, 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 but then you'd have... So in order to get the 180 day days, you'd I have to make the 24 a, a full day, right. which but would change everything else. When there's a delay for a snow day, it still we counts as a full day. day. Mm -hmm. Or an early release, it still counts as that full day. It so we're not, we don't make up the hours. But you make up the day. Up right. I guess, what I, I guess what I'm saying is uh, I'm, I am not supportive of a half day for kids on May 24th and a half day for kids on June 14th. I just think it's too much time lost on learning. And we would lose, if we made that, if we made that full day, the Friday, May 24th, we would lose the professional development time with no, the teacher. Which is not a good thing. And so you feel that. you're going to be able to get the MOA without? If we don't get the MOA, we will go to school on Monday, June 17th. Yep. Which I think you'd have very grateful parents to be done on the Friday the 14th. <clears throat> so Even if it is a full day. Has any conversation happened with anyone other than us right now? Yes, so I've had <laughs> conversations with uh, the Teachers Association, uh, with the leadership of the Teachers Association, with the leadership of the Unit B, uh, of which there's two. <laughs> so I spoke with both of them at the same time. Um, I also spoke with uh, the president of Unit C. Uh, all three were very much on board and understood the idea of the full day at the end of the you know, um, school year, that last day. I've also had a deep conversation with the leadership team, um, and they are in full support of it. It also I, falls in the parameters of our contracts for the it, days. Work. It does. It does, yeah. And it financially, I would have to think there's a savings of not coming back on a Monday well, for it's, an entire school. Yeah, it's, you know, jump starting an operation yeah. for two hours, and it could be the last day of school from what, I have learned is not even quite a half day. It's like two hours or something. And um, I don't see how we bring in 2,000 people on a Monday for two hours when we have language that allows us to not do that. And it's kind of, kind of jump-starting the whole operation for, <clears throat> mm -hmm. for what? Yeah. You know. So would the intent to be a motion to make that change at, and we'll get Yeah, that, so get we would. Right. <laughs> Contingent upon receiving or uh, executing. MOA. Well, do we then actually speaking of MOA? Do we first have to mm -hmm. take a vote to give Jason the ability to enter the into the yep. authority of MOA? <laughs> that's <laughs> yes, we're yes. learning. We're getting better. Absolutely, at this. that's <laughs> yep. exactly what I'm seeking. I can't okay, go into so that MOA that. without the authority. And then we would well, wait well, on this <laughs> actual technicality until that happens. Will it be no, soon? we our mo our motion our motion would be to <clears throat> move the last day of school to June fourteenth as a full day, and May twenty fourth as a half day for students for students and a half day PD for staff contingent upon receipt of a memo of understanding from all of the unions involved, um, and, and giving Jason giving the authority, Jason authority to, to do that execute that memo of understanding. Yep, exactly. Karen's going to make that motion. I'm going to say so moved, whatever you just so said. So moved, moved too. So moved as stated. stated. I got that one. Oh, you did it. <laughs> That's why we watched the video, right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get it. Uh, does anybody want to second that? Second. Second. So the motion is to uh, make the last day of school June 14th as a full day for students and add May 24th as the half day for students, which replaces the May 17th, and a uh, half day PD, following that a half day PD for staff, contingent upon a memo of understanding uh, with Unit A and Unit B, and granting Dr. DeFalco the authority to 
um, execute that memo of understanding with those unions. Whew. Any well, discussion? Question. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, just very briefly, the business office report. Um, Looks better. It does look much better. Uh, our revenues are, um, well, actually, we'll start with it as listed here. Our uh, salary spend down. Uh, we are uh, right on track. We are at $192,068.03, uh, still um, in the black at this time of the year. Um, our cost center reviews, we are um, in the black uh, $442,157. The difference between the, uh, the March cost center sheet and the April cost center sheet was we had over encumbered some funds in our health insurance. So we were able to release some of that, those over encumbrances. Um, Mr. Aaronworth and I will be meeting um, at length on Friday. Um, and we'll be reviewing each one of these function codes, each one of our lines, and we'll be forecasting out uh, with Monique and Tina's help um, the uh, quarter four expenditures both in payroll and in accounts payable so we can get a, a true number of where we will land the plane on June 30th, okay. so to speak. So we hope to have that in front of the committee by we'll May. To bring that back. Mm -hmm. Uh, the personnel report, uh, which Ms. Mm -hmm. Persum will be delivering starting Ju uh, June 1st, uh, okay. is pretty clear. Um, Lucky you. In terms of the resignations, retirements, appointments, et cetera. Um, and I should also mention, since food service is on here, we are interviewing this week. Uh, there are two finalists for the food service position. So we are in the process of interviewing those finalists. And it's still a part time. It's still a part time. Mm -hmm. But it was only a first one. Mm -hmm. All right. um, and then lastly, just the facility under the facilities, just the update on the complex roof. Um, we did um, file a, uh, after the last meeting in front of the town, uh, sorry, Board of Selectmen uh, in Blackstone, uh, we did file a claim with Maya regarding some of the damages to the roof that we discovered um, from the, 2000, the February 2017 um, report. And uh, we have since met with uh, one of their expert roofers and their <coughs> claims adjusters. Uh, we've walked the building, identifying all of the leaks. Um, and uh, we had the claim uh, uh, adjuster and the roofer come in and review all of the documentation um, from when the roof was installed in 2013, I believe. Um, and they are finalizing all of their reporting to then be able to uh, determine a plan moving forward for how to get how to best get the roof fixed. So we are like 80% of the way there. We just got an update from them today. They're very close to finishing this. May I ask a, a clarifying question? So um, with the claim, does that also sort of retroactively Um, consider getting reimbursed for the two ten thousand dollar payments that we already paid, thinking that the warranty wasn't in place, or something like I don't I don't uh, know exactly what I'm no, trying to ask, Jason, but that, I know we've paid twenty two ten thousand dollar payments. Okay. When that happened, this committee, various members, questioned the why. Yep. We were told at that time that the warranty didn't cover it for some reason. It was later discovered or support or claimed that it was because of the shoveling Shubbling. we've since discovered that that is we've spent over we've, twenty thousand dollars shoveling that roof mm -hmm. right to the people that installed it <laughs> and then had to pay twenty thousand dollars to fix to the issues so i'm just wondering in the claim is that the two ten thousand dollar payments included to say oh by the way we shouldn't have paid this either what we filed for a claim in, in the, and I apologize if there's a little bit of a, I'm just kind of processing that because what we filed for a claim was the initial 
damage report right. from the company who installed the roof, who we paid to clean the roof, who then said we damaged the roof, mm -hmm. of $175,000 in 2017. What does that look like in 2019? I don't know. Mm. I also don't know to what degree um, Maya's attorneys are going to outline what we should be reimbursed for because we have, as I stated in the committee, I had the warrants, I've got the invoices, we have all of that there. They're, they now have it, Maya now has it, um, has spent over $20,000 on making sure that, that, that the right care has been taken for that roof in terms of snow removal during Superstorm Helena. I mean, this is how far back we go with this and <laughs> how deep in the weeds we are with this of damage that was done. So I don't, I don't know what that ultimate claim will shake out to. I wish I had a better answer, Tammy. I don't know if they're going to say the total cost plus reimbursement. I tend to think they won't be reimbursing. I don't know um, what that will look like yet. Okay. Is that, I know that's not the best, but. No, I mean, I think as long as it's being considered somewhere that we already did pay $20,000 that we, it, if we sort of win the claim type thing, then we probably shouldn't have paid that other 20 either, right. oh, by the way. <laughs> and I don't know if right. there's any repercussion on it, but. Well, we've, what we have given them are all of the invoices and the copies of the warrants. Okay. So they have evidence of all of that. Also, the town of Blackstone has all of that. We sent it to Dan Keyes literally the next morning after okay. that meeting in February. Okay. So they all have that. Okay. Thank you. That's it? Okay. May I? May I? You have a, I, I saw, a you have a, a question on this? So the, the, warrant, the warrants that we're signing, mm -hmm. some are have wacky dates on them, like from January and some are, I, I, so January, I moved February. the folder, but they don't seem to be this month's and I'm not sure if they were included. We only received one, I, I think I only received one voucher email for mm -hmm. this meeting this so I I don't know where but we why had we had so but many do you remember our last workshop we had there. received the voucher it's there. we yeah but we had received the vouchers in the mail and we wondered why we didn't have them to sign yep that's there. so that's that one so, that's that one. but then there's so another this one stack is dated March 28th okay these are dated for sorry I didn't notice before we are voted. they student activities uh, it doesn't it appear to be leave at the top Non-check payroll voucher. Those are mine. Look, that's payroll. And they're non-batch checks, I think, for payroll. Yeah. I had a Can you explain? <laughs> yes. Sorry. We started to, after January, um, with the accountant, Ron Pierre Louis, we started to do a lot less um, processing of checks, more. Um, some things are paid online through the big ACH. I was running a check for everything and it was causing problems with balancing. And so I was asked not to run a check anymore. But what happened was I didn't, I didn't know how to print the vouchers. So then we figured out how to do it through budget sense and that's why mine are backed up. Oh, I see. So they're non-check batches. But there's still monies going out, so they have to don't. The money is going out. The, one of them is Unibank, and that's to pay the payroll. One of them is um, federal taxes, state taxes. I pay those online. Medicare. Um, there's oh, PenServe, that's where they do the 403Bs. I pay that online. So will we, I, I mean, I'm assuming that we would get some kind of record of it so we review it and then we sign it because they're not supposed to go out before we approve it's correct <laughs> that's why we're yes, so I, I don't know like I said I just happened to I, I thought it was just what was in our I've voucher and then payroll in payroll I've never done that um, I don't so it's Tuesday sometimes Wednesday morning before payroll is finished so I'm just saying, I don't know. I know Tina LaCroix gets it to you by, I think, Monday or mm -hmm. I'm not sure of the date. But payroll is a little different. So I can't have that ready. Like, I wouldn't be able to have that ready to you by a Monday. 
to look so, at it. So I don't know. So have we done, when we did the old yeah. system, Monique, um, how, how, so how, how did the committee, how did we do it just, then? Just this paper. So what I would do is I would run the payroll, run the vouchers, and then everything would go into the folder. Right. But I didn't send anything separately. And then the payments were made after, or did you, or had you already? Well, tomorrow is payroll. Yep. So you would be signing it now, but tomorrow is payroll. And I haven't made any, those I did because I were trying to backtrack. But I wouldn't make any payments until tomorrow for the um, deduction companies. Like, so Monique, the sign. ones with the funky labels, those are things that were paid without a check. But because they're back things, would you say that they've already been in our vouch? We've already signed the voucher, they were, and then they were paid. It just now they're coming in yeah, a different. Yeah, it's just kind of. I didn't really, I didn't really, I didn't realize it at the time. I, I was so used to running it a certain way. Right. And then, I was sitting down with Tina Lacroix one day, and we were going over everything, and I said, well, first of all for the school committee and second of all for the auditors. So if they're looking at something, if they're, the whole thing is, it's not all here. Mm -hmm. So then we figured out how we call budgets and then we figured out how to um, print this. And that's why this is here, this way. It won't look, it won't be like this in the future. Everything will be um, as I do it, and, you know, as. So would it come to us in a sort of like the same voucher yes. document that we get in our email, it would just say non-checks or what, however and you're labeling you'll, and you'll it. Get more, and, and unfortunately, you'll have more to sign. <laughs> yeah, because we have, I have are, to do them separately like so that when the, uh, right now, when Patty Gauthier balances everything, it ha it's by account or separate. something. Yes, they want everything on its own voucher. And I'm sorry, but that, it makes more paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, really? that was one of the, that was the first thing. I was like, wow, there's so yeah. many of yeah. these. And so then, then when I started to look at the dates, it looked weird. And then all of a sudden there were those weird labels and it got <laughs> weirder. And I was like, I don't know what I'm signing right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I panicked. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I, 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 don't, I don't know any other way to do that. Yeah. I think it will make sense going forward. It was just the first it's, time and I was the just, first person. And we apologize. It should have been explained <laughs> before no you got just, any of this. My question is, when did we actually approve these? Is it tonight? Um, <clears throat> we just did general warrants, and they're in our folder, but their dates are. Uh, when were they actually approved? Approved or paid? Approved. <laughs> well, were they approved? <laughs> Clearly, on the date. But w but so my were question they was: Were they in our original in in yeah. some past warrant? They were paid, and yes. now. So they're run as a separate room. document to yes. keep track. Oh, I understand what you're asking. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. So we're just making sure that we actually us, we approved we yep. approved them. They've been paid, and, they've been paid. and yep. now this is sort of like a third step because you need to yeah. figure out your paperwork. Yes, I want, I want <laughs> everything to be to be there, and I said I, I didn't have a paper trail on on the, some of the non-check batches, mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure. I, I, er, at first, I wasn't sure how we were going to do it, and now we know how moving forward. But now, it, yeah. And I'm sorry, I didn't contact you earlier to tell you. I apologize. Oh no, that's not your fault, Monique. That's no, it's not. No, no, I didn't yeah, mean it that way. Just, I just I wouldn't oh, no, explain but I, it. I, I didn't. do. I should have said something. No, because what we're signing is this big approved. thing. And <laughs> so what? What they're signing now, the backdated stuff had already been signed, and approved yes. and paid. Yes. This is just so all the paperwork aligns. Yes. Understood. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. To me. And, and you I just won't see anything sure. like this again. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> but now we'll go back. Thank you for the explanation. Yeah, sorry. That's okay. Don't apologize. Already? Yes, I did that step. Okay. There's like sorry. every other page, so be careful. All right. I'll so. So, did you have something else, Tammy, or that was no, it? No, but I will need some of that back because right, I, I stopped just, signing. Yeah, when I started yeah. to we have more hasn't questions. Yeah, yeah, it hasn't. So, so, so okay. back here first. once we adjourn, we can okay. pull up chairs and I'm just good then. I circle just... them around. How about that? <clears throat> All right. Um, Sarah, any any school committee forum item? Um, I did see that the 
budge, state budget is through House Ways and Means. Oh, yeah. And I believe the number for regional transportation reimbursement went up to 80% reimbursement <coughs> and Circuit Breaker up to 75%. So we'll see where it goes from there. That's all I got. Um, I know our fifth graders just started on CAS yeah. this week and you know, wishing them good luck. And after vacation, I think everybody else starts. So work hard, do your best. Good luck. All means exactly. All. Enjoy your vacation. Yeah. Hopefully we'll have good weather. I, um, I just want to, um, as we all know, I'm sort of on social media often. I'm looking at the, the district pages and looking at there are a million tweets that are coming out of the Blackstone Millville Regional School um, District. And I just I wanted to thank Tim um, and Jesse. Um, because a lot of stuff that's coming out are these like videos and I'm assuming they're the ones who are doing them. I'm not entirely sure. I know Mr. Godet has some, some to, thing to do with them, but um, they're really nice pieces of positive um, happenings that we're, you know, we are able to share with our families. Um, and I, I really appreciate that because I think when we are questioned, whether here or at either of the towns about accountability, I think those are the things that help us build that, you know, that story of what we're doing to be accountable, what we're doing to activate our kids um, desire to learn and participate in our community. And those videos are awesome to be able to do that. So I just wanted to thank though, um, Jesse and Tim and Mr. Gaudet and whoever else is <clears throat> shooting videos. And I think, um, like I said, I, I share the tweets a lot because people don't use Twitter as much as some other stuff. So I'm always, especially uh, Dr. DeFalco, I you will usually share his tweets via Facebook and then it reaches, uh, you know, more people. So I just want to give that shout out because I, I love those kids singing and doing, you know, fun stuff. Nothing. Nothing. Aaron? Um, so I just, I want to give an update, a quick update on our insurance, um, because it has been a pressing question from our FinComs and our selectmen, um, and just to let you guys know that uh, Matt brought in um, some, some great options for, for us to the Insurance Advisory Committee. And he actually had um, some of the reps in last week. The, the IAC met and, you know, we viewed all of the presentations. Um, and I just, I want to, I definitely want to reiterate how much work he put into it. And um, for many years I've sat on the Insurance Advisory Committee and we're always you know, in the, in, the, in the negative and needed more. And I, I do think we have some great options in front of us. So I just want to prepare you guys ahead of time that we will be um, talking about this hopefully at our next meeting um, with whatever options Matt feels best to bring to us. Okay. And he has definitely put a lot of time and energy into it. And I, I do think we have some great opportunities for our, our district and our employees. And that is all I, have. All right. well, I would like to once again congratulate the band, um, particularly the eighth grade and the high school, and they will be playing again in Mechanics Hall and Symphony Hall. So if anybody wants to go to Symphony Hall, uh, you will actually see the BMR band play. So that's very exciting. But also like to thank the two town finance committees and the Millville Board of Selectmen. We did have our meetings with them, um, and for the first time in my five years. Um, they were fairly positive meetings, and although people had very um, distinct questions and they want to hold the schools accountable, um, I really had the sense that they valued the work that the superintendent and assistant superintendent and even the even us as committee members put into that process. Um, and so um, I didn't feel belittled. I didn't feel put down. I felt listened to. Um, and that was a really nice feeling. I think the dialogue, has worked well this year, so I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I appreciate the towns listening. I don't know what their numbers will be when they put their budget forward, um, but I know that we gave them numbers that they can work with and that serve our district well, so I'm hoping they will meet them, that both towns will, and we'll move forward um, with a lot greater dialogue as we continue phase two and the other phases. So I appreciate everyone's effort working on the budget this year, um, and I know our work is not done. Um, if people would like to know where our budget numbers are, there is a video that Tammy, uh, one of the videos that Tammy shared with the talking heads uh, and the fidget spinner that will explain it very well. Um, and I look forward to continuing those dialogues. So. And I thank you all very much for selecting me as chair and I hope we work as well this year as we, next year as we have this year and I'm looking forward um, to that opportunity. So with that, I'll entertain. Uh, do, we don't have an executive session. We do, do we? Yeah. Oh, we do. Mm -hmm. um, Let's <laughs> add that the attending uh, mechanics or symphony hall is free. Oh, it's free. Oh, free, oh, free, free, free. As they say in the commercial, I free, free, free. If anyone would like to join the fan band. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mike. <laughs> That was so fun. Yeah. And thank you for re-electing me, by the way. I forgot this was our first. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, welcome back. <laughs> it is, it my is, it is, my it is nice term. to have that, I will say. It's nice <laughs> to have that. So thank you for running again. Um, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn, to move into executive session and not return to um, adjourn the meeting in the executive session. So, so moved. Moved by Aaron. Second. Second by Karen. Uh, uh, well, we need a roll call for that one. Yes. 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 We'll yes. 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 Taking it back. Ooh, where's my thing? Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. Great.